Okay. Finally, we start talking about control system. Okay. I'm not sure how much you know about control. What is a control system? You take this class, not for linear algebra for sure, right? You, you, you come here to learn control. So how much you learn about control? What is a control? Or what do you need to do a control system, to design a control system? Yun Tian? Uh, by the definition here for the first lecture. For the first lecture? Yeah. It's uh, determining the proper input of a system to achieve a system. OK, do, do, you know, do you know how to do it? Uh, a little in the previous class. Previous class. OK. OK. All right. Uh, let's take a look at a typical or the simplest control block diagram, right? You have a plant. What is a plant? Plant is, is this a system, all right? Plant is something that maps input to the output. OK. Plant is a physical system. Let's say uh, this room is a plant. But it really depends on what we care about. Then the plant input and output could be different. So the objective for our control design will be different. For example, if I want to control the temperature in this room, so the temperature will be my output. OK? And the input will be the air conditioner on and off and the set point of the temperature. OK? That's my control input. And the output is that, right? I can also try to say I want to control the air quality. There's so many people in the room, right? I want to control the air quality. And this air conditioner doesn't have that. Maybe I need to buy other additional equipment to control the air quality. In that case, the same physical system may have, uh, may have different uh, uh, control uh, output, right? So plant is nothing but a mapping. Maps, mapping input U to output Y, OK? It's a mapping from input to output. It could be the same physical room, this room. But it's uh, depending on our objective, the input output is different. Then for our design of the controller, the, the plant will be different. You see what I'm talking about? It's really about what you care about, about the physical system. OK, while you design control, you, OK, so given the input, you can control the output. Or you can change or modify the output. So our goal for the controller is basically try to say, what are the input I need to send to the plant so that I can have my desired output. The temperature, I think, is a little bit too hot here today. I want to cooler temperature, right? So I need to, I need to lower the set point, things like that. OK, when you design control, the first step, what you, you need is a model, typically. Some people may argue with me, OK, Professor, I heard nowadays AI solves everything. I don't need a model or physical model. That's wrong, right? It's another way to represent the model. OK, there's a different ways to represent your understanding about the behavior of the plant you care about. If you know nothing about the system, all you can do is randomly guessing, right? So you have to know some knowledge about the system. OK, what kind of input lead to what kind of output so that you can design a desired input, OK? So the modeling is try to capture the prior information about the plant so that you can design the controller in a way that is more effective. OK, uh, the first thing I want to emphasize today is about modeling. Okay, and maybe next a few times about modeling. And uh, the first thing I want to say is that model, model is different from the plant or the system. Okay, when you do simulations or whatever, so that plant is not the mathematical model you use to design your controller, is whatever the physical system it, it is. Okay. Your model is your mathematical representation, mathematical representation of the system, but it's not equal to the system. A famous saying is, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Suppose I want to control the temperature in this room. What do you think 
would be a good model. For the next time, uh, always, uh, the always the same. Okay. Yeah, always. So we can use physics, right? Thermodynamics. Did you learn those things? Or we can use, say, oh, I think it's a first order system. If I turn it on, then the temperature will gradually converge to some my set point. After that, it would right? zigzag around that set point. Okay, that's the first order system. Some people may say, I think it's second order. Okay, and some people say, I have a new network model for this. Which one is good? Which one is right? No. All wrong, okay? None of them are the really, really representing the physics of the system. If you want to truly understand the temperature in this room, then you need to know every molecule's motion. Okay, all the environment, everything. That's, but I don't think we can have that. So whatever model you come up with is always a simplification, all right? It's abstraction of the bulk behavior of your system. It's not really the true system, right? So first order, second order, neural network, whatever that is, it doesn't matter. It's all wrong. But roughly capture what you need, that's the key, all right? So all models are wrong. Some are useful. How to derive system model? First of all, two approach in general. One is first principle. What do I mean by first principle? By physics, right? Physical laws. The physical law may be more general than just the uh, Newton's second law. Of, it, it's no more general than that. Okay, it's basically describing or mathematical description of the underlying mechanism, underlying. And the principles behind your system. That's what I mean by physical law. I will give you examples. Sometimes there's no physics, quote unquote physics, but it's still first principle. You basically describe how the system evolved using your deep understanding about the underlying process. Another way is uh, data driven. That's more popular nowadays, but, but it's, it's really something Old, okay, it has been done for many, many years. Recently, just the deep learning, deep network has become more popular and enable a lot of more tech, new technologies. But the, the, the idea of data-driven modeling is, is not new. Uh, this will be next time, next lecture. Uh, we are not going to talk about uh, neural network, but basic system ID using data, collecting data, is we will cover that using these words, okay? Uh, physical laws and uh, system ID, that's next lecture. Basically, that's use uh, input and output data pairs, okay, to construct a model. Okay, roughly you know, right? You collect, you, you, all of you have done some uh, physics experiments in your high school, or, or right? How do you measure the gravity constant? We have a slope. You have a slope, right? Small, small, small car and it's connecting with a tape. They have something called tape, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it seems that uh, the experiment didn't change for 20 years. I did the same experiment when I was young. Okay. So, anyway, so what you are doing essentially, you're collecting data, input outputs, and to construct uh, the parameter of the model. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so that's two purposes. At this lecture, we talk about in yeah, this lecture physical laws. Uh, this lecture. This is this lecture. And the key in this lecture is trying to introduce you the state space model, all right? And give you an example how to derive them from first principle. Uh, <clears throat> so then I'm going to ask, what do you think is a state space model? You learn this from your uh, signal and the systems, undergraduate control engineering class. Not really, uh, control class. You learn state space model, right? 
So I'm going to explain that again to you a little bit, but uh, hopefully it's slightly different. Okay. So first thing, you should know what is a static versus dynamical system. You're modeling, right? You model something. What is something? There's something roughly you can divide it according to different criteria. The most important thing is that we should distinguish for control system, okay? We should distinguish static system versus dynamic system. Can you tell me what's the difference? The example I gave here is a static system, okay? By static, I mean there's no dynamics. Everything is immediate, instantaneous relationship between input output, okay? So that's why I say UT completely or uh, uh, immediately determines YT. So if you tell me a UT, I immediately see the effect, okay? In simulators or if you're familiar with MATLAB simulations, that cause direct feed through, right? Your input directly impact output instantaneously, okay? Uh, so the example could be my favorite, fa my favorite example, y equal to 2x, right? Um, sorry, this is u, right? So y equal to 2u. Okay, of course, the, 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 the real system can be more nonlinear. It's called static nonlinearity. Uh, so the relation is static. If you give me something, I immediately see the effect. So in this case, if you want to design control, suppose you don't have disturbance, you don't have any uncertainty, you just nothing, then it's very simple. It's just inverting it, right? So you can have a controller. Suppose I have a Y ref. Uh, this is my controller. I don't need feedback anymore if I don't have any uh, dynamics, I don't have any uh, uncertainty. So feedback is needed only if you have uncertainty, disturbance, that's most important. And also when you have, you're dealing with dynamical system, not static, okay? Static is easy to deal with. Suppose that's my, my ping, this is my U, this is Y, right? If I want Y to follow the Y reference, what should be my controller? Uh, will be my inverse of this mapping, right? So whatever that mapping is, this is the mapping. Maps, let's use, use a dot as a function. Because when I say a function, I of x, x is a dummy variable, okay? I can say f of z, f of u, f of i, whatever I can use, but really it defines its mapping from the domain of input to the domain of uh, to the output range. So this is a mapping maps input to output. The controller could be what? Phi inverse this mapping, right? In other words, u should be equal to phi inverse y ref and the y equal to phi of u. You have phi of phi inverse of y ref. You have y ref immediately, perfectly, instantaneously, right? If everything is correct, is everything is, is, is static. Very simple, right? So some people call this a control system. Um, I would say, yes, it's almost like a user your calculator, that's AI machine. You can call it that way, but, but it's, uh, it doesn't really capture the essence of control system, right? Static is not the target for our study, not because it's too hard, it's because it's Okay, is that clear? I hope I can emphasize that. I don't think that was emphasized quite a bit uh, or sufficiently in your previous class. Um, <clears throat> all right, any questions so far? Now our main target is dynamical system. Okay, a dynamic. How do you model dynamics or dynamical system? All the things we care, what do you care? Your grid? I mean, in terms of physical system, you care robots? 
electronic system, electrical system, mechanical system, mechatronics, mechanical plus electronics, right? So all the things is governed by some differential equations. Okay, robot is really trying to make something move, have motion, and its motion is governed by physical laws, and the physical laws are all mostly differential equations. Okay, you know differential equations, right? Okay, we can. Uh, that's a lecture note. I think everyone. Uh Okay, uh, we should continue, by the way, I think. <coughs> All right, I want to make sure everyone's got a copy. You直接扔给他们就可以了,那谁,听不到我说话。all right, <clears throat> anyone else need a copy? Okay, let's, uh, let's start. So dynamic system is often or always captured by I don't want to be interrupted. Uh, is often described by <laughs> 可以了, 可以了. 没事, 没事, 你就放着就可以了, okay. Captured by uh, differential equation, ordinary differential equation. Um, so in this case, I, I hope you know what differential equation is, right? What is differential equation? Let's say I have y double dot plus 2y dot equal to negative e to the u, okay? I could be nonlinear, okay, by the way, right? It's, it may be a terrible dynamical system, but, but it's a dynamical system. It's described by a differential equation. And differential equation in this case, ut, the input at time t, do not immediately show up in the output, right? So I, I, I hope you heard of, uh, not I hope, you must, okay? This is a t, this is, this is your y t. The step response, so when the system, step response may be like this, okay? Step response, what does step response mean? When the input is a, a step function, right? Start from time zero is zero, but instantaneously jump to one and stay at one. So the output is one, but that one, doesn't really, I mean, eventually the, the yt may convert to something non-zero, but that conversions take time to happen, right? So the input do not see immediate relation or immediate effect on the output. It's different from static. Static, if you change this to one, y is two. Immediately, okay? Immediately, I hope you understand that term well enough. All right, so at time g, t zero, let's say a, a generic time, may not be time zero, time t zero. The output yt does not fully capture the system behavior. Okay, let me give you an example to, to illustrate that point. So suppose I have a, um, 
I have the simplest example, okay? So this is my cart. You can ignore my that drawing. Uh, so then I have my, suppose this is my input, U, a force, okay? That I applied on this cart. Of course, the cart may, in the real physical world, may have some uh, uh, friction, right? Uh, I can call this friction, let's see, um, let's call this C, okay? C, that's a friction. Okay, then the motion of the car is completely determined by Newton's law, right? And uh, it's too simple. It's embarrassing to write it down even, right? So uh, if I call this, uh, this is my card's position, center of mass position, this is P. So the position will be P dot, uh, the, the physical law describing the motion is T P double dot, sorry, M P double dot equal to U minus C. Right? Say that again? Uh, yeah, of course. No, C is a constant friction. I don't, yeah. Or maybe time varying. I don't care about C for now. Let's, let's worry about something we can change. One thing will change over time is U, and the other thing is position of the card. Of course, Bin Tian said is the friction is sometimes it's state dependent. Uh, we don't worry about that for now. It's constant friction for now. Okay, if you draw a block diagram, that's the motion equation. Okay, so ODE. Okay, ordinary differential equation. What is non-ordinary differential equation? This is derivative of all with respect to the single variable, which is the time t in this case. Partial differential equation is not ordinary anymore, right? You have partial with respect to t, partial with respect to x, so it's like a way of propagating this room, that would be partial difference equation. It's not something we learn in this class, but it's something important as well. But, but I think for most engineering problems, we, we are good enough to just focus on ordinary difference equation. Okay, uh, then I can have a, a block diagram view, right? This is my card system, which is my plant, okay? And uh, this is my output. Okay, that's y. Y is my output, which is the position of the card. Okay, and my input is the force applied to the card. As simple as that. That's a block diagram plant. Okay, um, so <clears throat> in this case, you can see this. Uh, maybe try to understand my sentence here. The output y at time doesn't capture the, the entire system behavior. Why? This is my system, right? So the output, let me, let me, let me summarize my point, okay? Uh, <clears throat> let's say output y equal to p is the position of the card, right? Is, I would just simply say it's not enough for me to understand the system, why? If I tell you the system, I tell you the card is currently in this position, you, you somehow feel like it's something is missing, right? You need to know the velocity as well, right? Because it's not enough. If you mathematically or uh, more rigorously, I wouldn't say mathematically for now, let's say intuitively, because uh, the same, let's say the same position, may have different velocity. The car may be still in the motion, right? So it may have different future behavior, right? If you apply the same force, you like have the same force, it's this car, but it's in 100 miles per hour versus it's, it's zero velocity, then it's completely different. Its future behavior is completely different. So you didn't really uh, get everything you need to evolve the system into the future. So the velocity, then the future uh, behavior is different, okay? Future behavior is different. Are you with me? The just position is not enough. There's something inside 
the system that we need. Okay, so output is not in top. Something inside we need. Everything we need will be called a state. Okay, so then we should uh, <coughs> do think what, what we need. We need velocity. We need position and velocity. P dot at time t zero. If we need, need, if we know these two at time t zero, everything in the future is completely determined by the future input. Of course, if you change input, the system behavior will change as well because the control system. Why we only need these two? Acceleration can be gathered from ODE, okay. So then you need to connect your intuition to math or rigorous statement. What do I mean by enough? What do I mean by I need? It's really something about differential equation, okay? So what do I mean by the information I need? Is some information I need, then the system in the future is completely determined by the input and this, the state I need to know. In your differential equation class or calculus class, this is called initial condition, right? Initial condition. What you learned in your previous class, initial condition may be just the condition that uh, the value at time zero, right? But here it could be arbitrary time because every time now is my time zero for my entire future life, okay? All you care about is whether I have all, you, all I need to solve my system equation into the future. So mathematically, that's the meaning. And uh, <clears throat> so I want to say nth order ODE needs what? N initial conditions, right? You need Y and Y dot if you have second order. If you have third order, you need to have Y, Y dot, and the y to the second order derivative at time zero or t zero. Okay, so all we need, we put them together, that's a state, okay? So at time t, at time t zero, we, 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 all we need is we, we, we need, let's say we need uh, p t zero, p dot t zero, Okay, that's, it's a state vector I have at time t0. And t0 could be arbitrary, so at any given time, I need to know these two and in order to evolve my system into the future. This is my state at time t0. Okay. Let me give you an example. So suppose I'm the control system you want to control, or I want to control myself, by the way. My location will be my current state. State is something separate future from the past. That's my, my uh, uh, this, call, this bullet, okay? What do I mean by that? It doesn't matter how I got here this morning. Do you care? My future behavior, if my behavior is just my location, my future behavior only depends on where I am now and how I'm going to move, how am I going to move in the, in the future, right? The motion, how I'm going to move is my control. I, I can move here, move left, move right, that's fine. But it doesn't matter how I got here this morning. I could uh, drive a car or bike. I forgot how I got here, by the way. So I can walk up here, I can take different paths. It doesn't matter. As long as I know I'm here, all my future behavior depends on my current position and my future control input, which is the motion I'm going to take. All right, so my location now will be my state. If keep that in mind, I don't need to memorize everything in the past. Okay, separate future from the past, only keep this information. It's everything you need to evolve into the future. I hope I got enough. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, so if that's the state, like I call it a state vector, in this case, state will be two dimension, right? So um, let me use another bullet. So let's uh, define xt equal to x1 t, x2 of t. Okay, that's the two-dimensional state vector, which is equal to p t and p dot 
of t. All right, my x, the first coordinate of my state vector is the position, second coordinate is the velocity. As simple as that. All right, then I can specify what? x dot, the velocity, you can see take dot, you got what? You got p dot, p dot is x2, is x2 of t, and the uh, x2 dot is what? Is p double dot, p double dot is what? Is u minus c. Okay, so this way, I, it turns out the first order of the state vector derivative completely capture everything I need about differential equation. And if I want to somehow give a preview of the state equation formula, that's, this is nothing but a function of the state and input. Can you see that? It's a function of the state and the control input, of course. It depends on state and depends on input. Once these two are known, of course, the rest are all constants that are given ahead of time. So then I know my velocity, the state velocity. And if I keep my state, I know everything I need to evolve into the future, so I know both. Okay, now we have a state space form of my system model. It's nothing but turn a high order differential equation into a low order differential equation in vector, okay? In, that's why linear algebra is so important in Rn, okay? So let's jump a little bit to uh, the most general definition. I hope you have enough intuition that uh, I can throw some math to you now. Um, so I have a differential equation. And uh, I only have, I would say only evolve, involve, first order derivative, right? Derivative, but in Rn, okay? In state space form, there's no second order derivative. You turn all the second order derivative into first order by introducing another dimension, okay? There's no free lunch. Well, there's sometimes, but there's off. There's no free lunch, and the reason you can you can simplify, you can reduce the order of difference equations is because you increase the dimension of your state. Okay, because second order system, then you need to know what you need to know first orders, and the zero orders initial condition. You need to know these two things. We just put them together as a state vector. Okay. In this form, uh, we have state vector in Rn, and U could be arbitrary control input in Rm, so everything is multi-input, uh, multi-output. And the Y is Rp, and F is so-called vector field. It's a mapping from, can you read this symbol that looks ugly? What does this mean? F semicolon R, R, Rn cross Rm. An arrow to the left, right, and Rn. What is it? Okay. It's a mapping function. Is nothing but a mapping. Okay. So it's a mapping. Map to what? If you give me a pair of something, a variable in x n, and another. A variable from Rm, I will throw a number to you in Rn. Okay, so it's mapping from Rm, Rn by Rm to Rn. So that's a vector field. It's basically what? Specify velocity, velocity, what? Of the state vector. Okay, it's uh, and uh, H is output function, it's, it's mapping from, it, if you tell me control, tell me state, I can tell you the immediately the output. So output does not involve differentiation, and the state is the only thing evolved into the differentiation. Okay, there's a few other terminologies I want to, uh, I don't think we care too much, but it's important to, to, uh, to mention them. So it's called autonomous system, uh, if there is no control, okay, or control is already implicitly defined. So, 
so there's no control, then it's called autonomous, all right? Sometimes the control is given, let's say control is two of x, suppose, all right, for example. Then I can plug in x and two of x. This become my so-called fc. This is a closed loop vector field. This is a function of only x, right? So if I determine x, my control is automatically determined. So the whole mapping is only a function of x. There's no control anymore, right? So it's a control. It's some, some autonomous system is by default, it's autonomous system, there's no control. It's like uh, I throw a ball up here and this behavior in the future, I have no control. Gravity is my control, but I can now modify it. So it won't be my control, but it's autonomous system is evolved on its own, okay? But sometimes I have a control, I can plug in my control law, it's like u equal to 2x, but you plug that in, the system become autonomous as well. So there's no other thing you need to design. That's a closed loop system. Okay, for autonomous system, x hat is called equilibrium, okay? Equilibrium, if f of x hat equal to zero. What does this mean? Velocity is zero. Okay, you may say velocity is zero doesn't mean it doesn't move. It means in the state space form because there is no second order derivative at all. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, give you some graphical illustration of the vector field. This is actually a how to say it? it's a pendulum. Actually, it's a pendulum model. Uh, uh, simply pendulum model. Everything, the mass and the length, everything is a. Uh, it is is one okay unit, so uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. You just look at this differential equation. It's a pendulum dynamics. You just look at this. Uh, what's this? This is not in state space form, right? Uh, how do we change that to state space form? Uh, by the way, how many dimension I need? Two. Why? I have second order system, right? I need to reduce that down to first order. Okay, so I can say my x1 equal to y, x2 equal to y dot, right? So then I have, then I have what x, so my x dot is x1 dot, x2 dot equal to, this is x2, this is a negative sign x1. Okay, you have to replace everything some people ask me, can I use y here? This is y, right? Why I have to use x2? Because we want to, we want to replace everything or express everything in terms of state and the control, that's my standard form, okay? You cannot bring other variable, you have to use state and the, and the control. Okay, so uh, that will be my f of x. Any questions? That's a vector field. That tells me what? The direction, of course, the, the, the velocity. Velocity is, is a vector, right? It's, it's, a, it's in R2. This is in R2. The velocity, when, when I might uh, suppose, let's say, let, let me just walk you through some steps. So let's say I at a time, suppose at time t, okay? We are at xt, which is x1t, x2 of t, okay? Then I can compute, we can compute what? f x t. This tell me my direction or velocity. This is the velocity of motion of my system. What does this mean? If you look at this, suppose I'm here, okay? This is my x t at time t. So those arrows tell me what direction I'm moving. And the density of the arrow means the magnitude, roughly, okay? So, so you don't see the magnitude of the, of the, but at least you see the direction. So at this particular point, at this point, you are moving this way, right? Suppose I know where I am, I know my velocity, so I will know my next time position, right? If I know my next time position, and next time I also know my velocity, I know my next next time position, right? So my, I know everything 
in the future. Okay, how does control impact my behavior? Modify the vector field, modify the velocity I'm changing. Okay, so so here, then I know I need, I will move to here, right? This is my x t plus. Okay, uh, here maybe, and then here I would x t plus plus. All right. So if I follow this vector field, if you think about this graphically, you will eventually come here. Okay, that's my one of the equilibrium. Equilibrium means stay there. If you are here, then the vector field tells you zero velocity. So you stop there. You're happy there. Okay. So how many equilibrium I can find from this uh, figure? Here's another equilibrium, right? This is uh, zero, I think this is two pi. Okay, it's a pendulum, right? Two pi, of course, is the same thing. <laughs> okay, and this is zero, it's also equilibrium. That means if you start from zero, you do not move, right? There's another equilibrium here. Pi is up, upward, okay? So I can, uh, if I want to draw it, so I think this is like this, uh, sorry. This is the pendulum model. Uh, I think that's, that's this. Okay. Uh, why is the, uh, why I think why is the angle? Okay, so <clears throat> here is also the equilibrium. The velocity is zero, but a little bit perfect. If you perfectly upright, then you will be perfectly upright forever, but perfect thing never happened in reality. A little bit away from zero, you will you will drop. This is unstable equilibrium, but it's still a equilibrium. Okay, I don't think we need to worry about this too much. But all I want to illustrate to you is that by specifying the vector field, you specify everything of the system in the in, in, in Rn. Okay. So that's the state space model. And uh, if I ask you how to find the state space model. You first ask me, okay, what's the physical law of the system? If it's second order or third order, I need to turn it back to first order system in uh, with with a state vector, multi-dimensional state vectors. Okay, then if I have a multi-state uh, vector, multi-dimensional state vector, I only have first order derivative. Then all the future behavior is defined, determined complete by my current projection in the state space. Okay, uh, it would be very easy uh, if we see more examples. The general discrete time state space model, and uh, we focus, by the way, this, this class primarily in discrete time. Okay, and uh, so, but it's simple. It just basically tells you your current position and uh, the current control input that completely determines the next time. So this is not a vector field, it's a directly called state update equation. Okay, so if I'm here now, my control is move left, move right by one unit of step, if it's match my control, right? So my position will be my state, and if I decide to move right, then my position will be here, okay? So the system is modeled complete by the next state, uh, the state update equation, and output is also a function of the state. Again, it's called uh, autonomous if there's no control, and that's, uh, it's called equilibrium if in discrete time, it's not velocity equal to zero, it's next time, if you plug in your current state, your update equation tells you the next time you stay here, okay? All right, so that's the case. So discrete time system arise from variety of reasons. Uh, the first case is that discrete system, discrete time system, can be obtained from continuous time model by sampling. That's the majority of the case that we're dealing with. If you have a circuit, if you have a robot, your model become because because of the uh, those uh, circuit laws and the physics laws, there are differential equations. Then if you implement in your code. You have sampling times, and that turns the system into a discrete time. Does that turn the system into a discrete time? The system is, it's different from the model, right? 
So that turns the model we need to use into discrete time model because we only care about the system behavior at time now and the next time when I sampled it. In between, I don't know what's happening, right? So I only care about this, so I have a discrete model will be easier for me to design my controller. But the physical system is, is still evolved continuously. Okay, and some system naturally evolve in discrete time, like a stock market. Okay, it's also a dynamical system. You can also use a, a state space form to represent it, right? But it only happens every day or every hour or every minute, depending on how frequent you trade. Okay, so that's uh, that's an example of a discrete time, and uh, uh, let me use two more minutes, okay? Because we. We somehow waste a little bit of time for the lecture note. Um, <clears throat> let's finish this slide. And the system we care in modern control theory, modern control theory is mainly about linear systems. Okay, I introduce everything in the most general nonlinear form, but all we care really about, or the theory cares about, is linear system. And uh, we have to know what linear system is. Linear system means in state space form, this vector field, for example, in, this, in continuous time, is a linear function of, uh, of, this, of the system, okay? It's a linear function of the state and the, and the vector, and the, and the u, sorry. So, and the output is also a linear function of state and the input. What's the dimension of A, B, C, D? Suppose my x is in Rn, my notation, okay? R, u is Rm, y is Rp. So can you tell me what A, B, C, D dimension is? I don't need to tell you, but you can tell already what is A dimension? n by n. b is n by m, because b need to multiply u and give a vector in Rn. So it's n by m. C is N, D is P by M, okay? Everything in this class, by default, is a vector or matrix. Its dimension is clear from the context, okay? I'm not going to babysitting you, tell you everything, the number, okay? You should be, I, I think that's, information should be clear. Okay, and we are trying to learn modeling. What do I mean by model? Modeling means I want to find the model. In state space form, the model will be captured by these two functions, okay? Velocity field or vector field and up the, the output function, y equal to h, u, and x. And if the system is linear, all I care about is finding this a, b, c, d matrix, okay? All I care about is find is to find this A B C D matrix. Okay. So that's the modeling. So now we are going to see a few examples how to derive or how to obtain this I F and H or the linear case A B C D matrix. Okay. Um, I think we can take a break now. Thanks. Okay, uh, I think it's a very simple uh, fact. For the state-space model, I think it's pretty uh, straightforward, but we, I emphasize quite a bit about the concept and understanding. I don't think that's necessary. Once you see more examples, I think it should be clear. For example, uh, the student asked me, for example, I have the card system. I have a second order system, right? P double dot equal to the force minus friction, and the output is my P, the position. This one, all I did so far, I mean, in, in the, on that slide, is just say this one is equivalent to a first order system. First order in R2. This is the second order in R1. Okay? This is first order in R2. And it can be written in this general form where you specify the velocity of the vector. That's, that's enough. Of course, the y is also a function of x, right? So already in the state space form, 
these two are equivalent, that's all I mean. These two models are equivalent. One is second order, one is first order. One is in R1, one is in R2. Which one you prefer? Either one is right. Mathematically, they are equivalent. Or which one I prefer? In modern control, in most control theory, typically we work with state space model. That's the majority result residing, okay? That's all. Now let's see how we can uh, obtain those models. Uh, give you a few examples that I think that can make everything a little bit better or more clear. Uh, suppose I have a little bit more evolved, not just a card, we have a spring damper power, power system. That's almost like a typical example for mechanical student. Let's start from the basics. You first of all, you do, you do force analysis, right? You do force analysis. Uh, the force I'm applied, that's UT, and there's other force, right? The first one is my, uh, I, in this case, I don't have additional friction, okay? All the friction somehow are modeled by the spring system. Uh, what do you think the force generated by the spring system? First of all, uh, K1 times, if this is Y, and initially you're at zero, K1 times Y will be the force. This spring, the first spring, this spring, can I see my mouth? This spring general force dragging this guy from moving towards the right direction, right? Okay, a larger Y will give you a more, better, more force and it's proportional to the dis dis displacement. And the second force is this K2, but the K2 will be compressed if you move to the right, okay? A positive Y will have a negative force is also the force to the right left. Okay, so the K2 is also here. Uh, do you understand this one? Damper is ideally it's proportional to the speed, the velocity of the motion. Okay, that's ideal. So let's, uh, this, I have another force. Uh, that's, I think it's a B times Y dot. That's the force. Okay, force is proportional to the velocity. Okay, I have three of them, and that's called force analysis. Okay, and uh, once I have that by Newton's law, then I have M, Y double dot, I may equal to the net forces, right? So that will be this force minus all the rest. So K1 plus K2, Y, minus b y dot. Okay. So that's my second order system. Completely capture the motion of this car system. You can simulate this. Okay, by simulation, what do I mean? If I say I ask you to simulate something, there's a lot of simulators. In in Ross you have a gazebo, right? I I like a Drake, you are going to use Drake. The most popular one is Majoko in AIs, right? And there's nowadays, uh, NVIDIA also have this SX. Uh, there's so many simulators, we bought so many of them. What they're doing is? The simulation, there's so many fancy things, the, the ball dropping, the bricks dropping, the, 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 the building kind of falling. All these animations are simulators. They are doing is solving differential equations, okay? There's nothing more but it's hard to solve. You can simulate this by solving the difference equation. This one is easier, okay? You can, you can play with it, you can add, have animation. Visualization is different from the physical engine, physics engine behind the simulator, right? Physics engine is nothing but solving differential equations, sometimes partial differential equations, but most of the time, uh, other differential equations, okay? So, <clears throat> so you see that everything is about differential equation. Okay. Um, so now we can, uh, if I want to move it to the left, it looks better, right? Uh, M, Y double dot, uh, M, Y double dot, uh, plus K1 plus K2, Y, uh, oh, sorry, I want to move this first order first. So that's B times Y dot, plus K1 plus K2, Y equal to U. All right, that's my uh, system. Okay. Is this in state space form? 
No, it's a second order system, okay? State space form means if you know the state, you know everything you need in the future. It's something separate future from past. If I know why, it doesn't do this. It's not my state. I have to know more than why, right? So what I need to know, state space model of example one. The first thing I have a comment here, there's a infinitely many. I can define many, many states. They are all equivalent. But in this example, let's do a simple, simple case. Uh, so let's define, let's define x1 t equal to y of t, the most straightforward one, x2 t equal to y dot of t. What do I mean by there's infinitely many? I can say x1 t equal to 2 y t, okay? I can say x2 t equal to 3 y dot t, up to you. But that can also have an equivalent representation of the differential equation. You can think about this just changing unit. All right? You can select different units. The number look different, but the essence of the physics is the same. OK, so uh, in this way, I have a two-dimensional state. So my state will be x1 and x2, right? Then uh, <clears throat> what do I mean by find the state space model? I need to find something like x dot equal to f x u, y equal to h x u. I need to find this. I need to find f and f, h in this case, OK? Uh, <clears throat> so then I take derivative of x dot. I got x1 dot t. I got x2 dot t. OK? And, uh huh. I lose my, I don't know what happened. This one is, uh, so x1 dot is, what is it? It's x2 t, right? What about x2, x2 dot? So let me, uh, we need to divide by 1 over m, right? Divide by m, okay? So that's, then you have u minus, minus uh, b, uh, y, b, y dot, right? Y dot is x2. I, ha I must replace, because it has to be a function of only state and the control. So it's x2 of t, and uh, minus k1 plus k2 x1 of t. Okay, that's it. It's a function of state and control, right? I can do one step further. I'm going to ask you, is this a linear system? Really? Is it a linear system? Yeah. Whether it's a linear function of state and the control. I can write it like this. Okay, so it's a... 0, 1 times x1 t, x2 of t, right? That's the first row, okay? Second one is, these two are related to state, right? They are linear, right? So what I have is, uh, uh, the first one is negative uh, k1 plus k2 divided by m, okay? This guy is negative b divided by m. Are you with me? This is OK, right? You should be able to say it right away. Now I have something times u as well. What is it? This part is 0. Next part is 1 over m. OK. I have find a linear mapping. The vector field is a linear function of the state vector and the control. In this case, control is just a scalar. This will be my A matrix. This is my B. This is my X vector. Of course, this is U. So AX plus BU, I find this particular form. And uh, also, what about my output? My output is X1. Right? My output is X1. Is it linear? Of course, it's linear, but it's 1 times 0, 
one zero times x one x two, right? Plus zero times u, right? So this is my C. This is my D. So I find A B C D matrix to describe a linear system. I don't have to do it. Whenever I find this, I'm done. But in this case, it is a linear system, so I can find a further structured, more structured representation of the system with A B C D matrix. Okay, any questions? Now let's look at another example. We have uh, many examples. Hopefully we're going through. All the examples are simple. Relies only on high school, maybe middle school physics, right? And all we need is that. So I don't think we need too much more. Okay, so this is the soft landing of a lunar module. It's basically like a rocket, right? How the rocket works. You were a pendulum. So basically, there's a combustion there, right? There's a liquid or solid fuel you combust. You need to inject out or shoot out some mass exhaust. Those are exhaust. Okay, basically exhaust, and then generate force, counteract the force. You 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 are being propelling upward. Okay, so in this case. In this case, the thrust equal to uh, here I have a constant k, so equal to k times dm dt. The change of the mass of the module. Why the change of if if you, you shoot out some gas exhaust, that you're losing mass, right? Your module will become lighter and lighter. Okay. So in this way, I have a system that have a mass, but this mass is keep changing, right? For a current mass, I have a gravity, and then I have a thrust. This is my thrust, okay? Uh, it's, uh, it's just the upward direction, okay? Then my, the whole dynamics, if I want to describe it, is I'm y double dot equal to negative m g plus K times U. Okay, K times dm dt. If you like, uh, yes. And I know m dot equal to U dm dt. So how many state variable I have? We have three. Why? Here is a second order system. I need to turn it to first order vector system, which I have two dimensions. But there's nothing, there's another thing that is also evolving according to a differential equation on its own, which is the math. Okay, the math, M, it keeps changing, right? You have a differential equation for M. So in this case, uh, we let Y equal to uh, x oh, sorry x1 equal to y the position so let's say x1 equal to y x2 equal to y dot and I have another thing it's m knowing these three will tell me everything I need to evolve into the future so think okay if you stop if you if you skip any one of them you don't complete, you cannot evolve into the future. You have to know this as a differential equation. Okay, all we need is to find the differential equation of this state vector in R3. So x dot, in this case, is x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot. Okay, I know x1 dot is what? Is x2. x2 dot is x3. No, right? X2 dot is not X3. X2 dot is what? Minus G plus K divided by M. M is changing over time. So it's X3. M is a state. Okay? M is a state. In this case, M is changing. You have to know its 
value before you can evolve into the future times u. Okay, are you with me? Okay, what's the third x3 dot is u? Is u, right? So then what I need to do now, I'm done basically. So this is the function of f, x, and u. This tell me the vector field. What do I mean by vector field? So give me a state of the current position, current velocity, and current mass. Okay? This function, this function is a vector valued function. Okay? This function tell me the instantaneous direction I need to move. The system will evolve. Okay? Then you know what's the next time. You, you instantaneously need to know, you, you already know uh, how to evolve in the future. And uh, let me spend some time. This will be x1, xu, f2, xu. Sometimes I write like this, x and u. Because f is a mapping from the x space cross u space to the x dot space. So, uh, so I'm just giving a simple test. What is, uh, what is this, this function? What is f3, x, and u? What's the third coordinate or component of f? It's just u, okay? It's the third coordinate of the f vector, okay? Of course, this is guys x2, and this guy is nothing but this, all right? So all of them are functions of state and the control. Is this linear? Can we write it like ax plus bu? Why? Because there's a k divided by x3. It's not linear. It's not linear. So no. It's not linear model. Not linear. Is this still a state space model? Of course. It has nothing to do with that linear or not. Okay. It's state space form already. So it's a nonlinear system. Okay. We have learn how to derive a nonlinear state space form. Okay, that's good. Now let's look at another example which evolve in discrete time. Sensor networks, the simplest, the simplest case. Uh, so let, let me just derive how the system, how the algorithm work. Okay, so suppose I have three nodes distributed around certain area. Uh, maybe sometime I have thousands of them. Okay, and this node can communicate with each other with this, it could be measuring the temperature. Okay, it could be measuring the temperature at that spot because maybe the surface of the, the jet engine. Okay, that's possible you have placed different temperature sensor at different locations so you know the temperature distribution of the system. Okay, suppose I have a measurement, whatever that measurement is, and the update rule is the following. Uh, the updated value of the sensor is the average of its own value with the neighbors. Okay, let me just say, uh, at any given time, I have the xk, x1, k, x2, k, x3, k. Is the value stored, I would say value stored at node i, okay? I have three of them. So each of these sensor kept a value. This value is not the measurement, okay? It's, the, it's own measurement take average from the others updated. Next time they will send again. Okay, my question is, Q is a question, Q and A, that means question and answer, right? How does, how does the values stored in the nodes evolve over time, okay? You design algorithm, okay? Your algorithm is that, okay, this sensor, you use whatever STM32 or whatever, you program it. Whenever I receive from a neighbor, 
you can only receive information from your neighbor, suppose. Okay, neighbor, I will say my, my measurement plus the neighbor divided by two will be my value, okay? I keep updating this value. You have an algorithm. The algorithm is not, I mean, to analyze this algorithm, you need control theory. To implement this, you need computer science, or at least you need to know coding, right? Uh, so then I, my state vector is three of the nodes, is three dimension. This is, uh, in this case, I need to specify how the system evolve, means how I move from my current state vector to the next. So xk plus one, x2 k plus one, x3 k plus one. This equal to, this equal to, uh, what about x1 k plus one? So this previous value plus, this neighbor is two, right? So x2, this neighbor value, receive, then you take average. Average, you have two of them, you take average, you got this, right? And uh, what about x2? So x2, current value, then you receive from your neighbor, but this neighbor had two, okay? These two, x1, x3, are both neighbors of x2. So you, x1, k, plus x3, k. You have three of them, you take average, you divide by three. Uh, the next one is the same, is x2, k, plus x3 of k. Okay, any questions? So I'm describing some algorithm implementation, the whole process, the value stored at the sensor keep evolving, changing over time, okay? And we want to analyze how the thing's going to evolve. Uh, what I got is a, this is also a state space function because you specify, there's no control here, but it's, there's no control here, but it's still a state space model, okay? All you need is given the current state, you need to know how to determine the next state. That's already a state space model. What would be not a state space model that you are trying to describe? You may have something xk plus two plus xk minus 100. This is also called difference equation. It's higher order difference equation. Chaffin function, right? Wavefunction function is doing Chaffin function discrete time, right? So high order difference equation, you need to turn it to first order equation in vector space, okay? So in this case, I want to say this is a linear system. Okay, can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, so what, what, what I need to find out? What, I need to find the a, a matrix times the state. There's no control, right? X1, X2, X3. Can you fill up the blank here? What is the first row? One over two, one over two, zero. Okay, second row is uh, one over three, one over three, one over three. This is one over two, one over two. Okay, I have a, a matrix. So my whole process, if you somehow, I hope, okay, you can program. You can program this whole process, you can debug. But if you really want to understand what's going on, in your mind, you should think, oh, all these values evolve in discrete time as a state-space dynamical system. And this linear, I have an A matrix here, okay? And then later we'll find out the system is somehow converging, okay? You can analyze whatever rules or protocol, you call this protocol, okay? Uh, protocol. So basically, CAE, okay. CAE, uh, we come up with the CAE. Uh, this CAE eventually, you will find that this thing converts to the average of the whole distribution of the sensor node. And you can prove that always the case. Okay. Anyway, so that's a discrete time system. 
Now let's look at something you're more familiar with, or uh, <clears throat> PID controller, right? Did you learn this from the control engineering class? So what did you learn? Did you learn how to tune P PID controller? Yes. Two method. Two method. Almost. Almost two. What? Uh, almost. Almost. <laughs> almost forget. Okay. That means you haven't completely forgot. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to tune PID. Okay. And PID is a linear control system. Okay. So let's see how we can analyze its behavior so that you know your tuning is not an art. There's a science behind the tuning. You see what I mean? You can tune things. If you don't know what's going on, that called tune. Right? If you understand the physics, that's called analysis, fancy, or design. Okay, I hope you are more analysis and design, less tuning, hopefully. But sometimes you have to, as an engineer, you have to do some tuning. Uh, <clears throat> let's say this spring damper system as well, but now let's say we have a PID control system. Uh, let's call this, this is my plant, okay? Uh, <clears throat> this is my plant, so the dynamics of my system is the following. The dynamics is I'm Theta, this is the error. I want to really kind of uh, control the error along this direction. Along this, uh, this is only 1D, right? This is error. So I'm double dot plus B, the damper. See the E dot? I'm going to skip the force analysis part, I think. And the K times the spring displacement equal to the force I apply. And this is my control. Okay, I'm going to control the force applied to the system, so I have a spring damper system follow some desire. Okay. <clears throat> uh, how do I do the control? I already, we already, we already know how to derive the state space equation for this spring damper system. Okay, you can define what two state variables, then you can have a state state space model, but. Uh, using PID as a control, somehow you already determined the structure of your controller. The structure is what? I hope you know the PID, right? F or my U is F equal to P I D. P is what? K P times the error, theta E. Okay, the error. Plus, what about the I term? K I times the integral of the error. So theta e, d what? Integral over t, okay? Right? So d is kd times the theta e dot. Okay. So your feedback control law depends on theta, theta dot, and the integral of theta as well. Okay. So if I like, so I call it closed loop system. By closed loop means plug-in control. Plug-in control law, that means closed loop. All right, this is already a closed loop. So every time I measure the state, sorry, the, not, the, I haven't defined the state yet, okay? Every time I measure the output y, uh, theta e, then I, I have a rule or a law to determine my control, okay? So if I plug in this rule, then I have a, a, a closed loop system. If I plug in this, what I have is the following. It's a m, theta e double dot plus b minus k d theta e dot and what uh, minus uh, sorry k p where is the k p oh k minus k p uh, theta e 
and there's a minus ki theta e d, uh, integral equal to zero. That's the description of every single, uh, of the whole dynamics. Okay? So if I want to say, what's the state space form? State space model. What is the state space model in this case? How many state I need? I have second order differential equation, right? Why I need a three? I have an integral, that's not derivative. Okay, all right. So, okay. Mm, okay. All right, let's do states before. We need three state variables, okay? In this case, uh, let me direct tell you the answer. You will find it out uh, easily. So x1, let's call it theta e dt. That's my x1. My x2 is theta e. So, right? And x3 is theta e dot. Are you with me? Can I define like this? Okay, I can define like this. Then, if I take derivatives of the state variables, x dot equal to x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, x1 dot is x2, okay? x2 dot is x3, x3 dot, x4, we don't have x4, right? So what is it? x3 dot is a e, theta e double dot, right? So we'll be, uh, let's write it. So ki, is that ki? No, 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 hold on. x1, yeah, ki is the first one. ki, I'm divided by m, x1, right? Plus kp minus k, m x2 plus kd minus k uh, b divided by m x3 okay right okay no problem so is it linear or not linear, linear. okay good so you can write the matrix is like a 0, 1, 0, x1, x2, x3. X, this 0, 0, 1, this is a ki divided by m, kp minus k divided by m, kd minus b divided by m. Okay, I have my beautiful A matrix. Uh, I haven't finished yet, right? Where's the B matrix here? There's no B matrix anymore. It's autonomous. I plug in the control already, right? So if I, okay, sorry. If I turn this guy, into a state space form, I will have a B matrix, okay, that has the control. But now I don't have a control, I plug in my control. It's, it's like I can say this is x dot equal to f x u. Then if I plug in my control, suppose my control is a law, is g of x. If I plug in, that will give my x dot equal to f x g of x, okay? It's only a function of x. So now what I'm doing now is a closed loop dynamics, right? Only a function of x. If I gave me x, there's nothing I need to determine anymore. There's no control I need to determine anymore because the control, the way I determine my control is already specified. 
system is a linear system. For linear system, we're going to learn how to analyze stability, whether it's converged or not, converts to what and how fast, and those things to help you tune or design your KI, KP. You don't need to tune anymore. If you want to design the system, you can just design it, okay? We are going to learn how to design it later in this class, but now it's about modeling. Any other questions? No B in this case. Okay, if you don't, let's uh, jump to the next one. We know state-space model now, the definitions and the examples, okay? I'm not teaching you physics. I'm not teaching you how to describe your own system. I hope that's enough for you to know the essence of state space. State is separate future from past in the turn high order differential equation or difference equation into low order, first order differential equation, difference equation in Rn, in vector space, okay? Now let's see how do the state space form uh, model can, can you transfer or relate it to other model you know before, okay? For example, the first one is this two, right? The continuous time and discrete time. And how to move back and forth between these two type of system. That's important because sometimes you know the, the differential equation to start. And then when you design controller, you only apply your control at discrete time. All of that time may be small, maybe one millisecond or two. But it's still, you only apply your control at discrete time. So you need to design controller, you need a discrete time model. Okay, how to find a continuous time, uh, how to find a discrete time model from a continuous time model? That's very, very simple. It's based on simple differential equation. Uh, it's called Euler uh, forward rule, right? And there's many, many rules. When you solve differential equation, oftentimes you also discretize it. Uh, <clears throat> let's say from your calculus, if you, if you still remember, I hope so, from Calculus 101. Uh, I know, roughly I know, so given any function g of t, the derivative means what? So delta t go to zero, the, li the limit, g, delta t minus g of t divided by delta t, okay? The rate of change. Does this g need to be scalar or it could be vector? Hmm? Either way is fine, as long as, as long as I can take this minus, okay, subtraction. If this is well defined, this is well defined. The limit is well defined. Uh, whenever the limit is well defined, then this is fine. Okay, it could be R two, R three. G could be in R two, R three. That means a vector direction. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's say for small enough delta t, what I have is G of G dot of t will be approximately what? This guy, right? Small enough t, then it's close to the limit, right? Limit is t go to zero, but if t is small enough, I don't have to have an exact zero thing, maybe tiny, one millisecond or even one. Uh, it's uh, less than a millisecond, it's also better. So this is g t plus delta t minus g of t divided by delta t. So I know t plus delta t is roughly g of t plus g dot times this guy multiplied back, right? So that's that's very simple rule. And I don't think I need to go through the definition of derivative. Roughly that. What does that mean? It's the next time g equal to the previous time, g plus the rate of change of g times the time interval. The speed times time is how far you move. 
right? So it's the previous step times how far it moved uh, plus how far it moved give you in the current time. Okay, that's uh, what I'm doing now is I relate the derivative to this step function and the next step function values. Okay, that's very simple. Uh, that gives rise to how we are going to do this discretization because there is a more advanced discretization we are not going to cover in this class. Uh, <clears throat> this one is good enough most of the time. So given, this is given, okay, a state space model in continuous time. Now we want to have a discrete time model, okay? So this is my time t, this is zero. I will say this is my delta t, this is two times delta t, three delta t, all the way. I discretize my time mm -hmm. axis. So I can define xk, if I say xk, I'm defining that as the discrete value of xk times delta t, okay? So this is a little bit abuse of notation. So xk means the value of x at k times delta t. What we have from the beginning is a continuous time signal. I only care about its value at discrete time instant. Uh, I can define the same thing like a uk equal to ut, uh, sorry, k times delta t. And the yk equal to y uh, k times delta t, essential. Okay, they are all by definition. This triangle means definition. Okay, um, let's see then I, how do I find the derivative or evolution? How do I find the next step, next time state vector from the previous one? So xk plus one equal to xk plus one times delta t, that's what I mean, right? Abuse of notation, you are huh? That's the easy thing to uh, what is it? What, what I'm trying to do, I need to relay this from my previous step, xk, right? So that will be, if you use the previous formula, that will be xk times delta t previous step plus the, change, the rate of change, right? So that's x dot k delta t times delta t, right? So this current step, current step, plus how fast the velocity of change times how, how long you are going to follow its velocity will give you where you are at next time. Okay, right? Any questions? No question. So this is nothing but my xk plus, what is it? This is my continuous time model f. f, xk, uk, that's my speed or velocity, vector field, right? Tells you the velocity you're moving at this particular location, delta t. This is nothing but the velocity you're traveling. At least velocity at time uh, at least position and the uh, u input, okay. And uh, overall, I will have a discrete time version of the update rule. This is my, I will call it f d of x k, u k. This discrete time update. I'm using f for both continuous time vector field and also discrete time update state update equation, state update function. So now I'm I'm a uh, I just use the sub index to, to distinguish it. Okay, so yk is nothing but h of xk u of k. Right? I just plug in, uh, there's no difference or difference equation related to the output. Oh, it's time, sorry. Uh, let's finish this part. This is my xd of 
xk uh, what is it and uh, u of k nothing changed x f uh, at hd equal to h at the same function so i have my discrete time model is fd xk uk very simple uh, yk equal to hd xk uk so i'm given a h and f in continuous time now i obtain uh, fd and hd in discrete time that's a discrete addition okay if you control my let's say my quadrupad in my lab okay so that model is continuous time you discretize it it's just just using my i think just using this simple one okay it's good enough you have discrete time model then you can design your controller any questions by the way Hard to see? Yes. Start some noise, yeah. Ah. I have a single function. Uh. Here, the things are dummy variable. This is the continuous time of f. This is fd is the continuous time of f. Okay, so the relationship between them is this. You put the number into what kind of number you can. It's in time. K is also continuous time. It's x. X's number is continuous time of k times delta t time of this number. You put it into the continuous time. OK， 你不要纠结这个是 f x u 还是 f x k u k 还是 f of z and p。It doesn't matter. You plug in two numbers. The number you plug in is the current state value and the current uh, input. This is just if you plug in this f without d. OK， this f is just the velocity. Instantaneous velocity. This is a continuous notion, right? But the velocity times delta t tells you how far you move from your period step. Okay, I think uh, with a little bit exercise later, you you will find it out. Okay. Uh, okay, let's get started. So last time we talked about uh, state space model. <coughs> Basically, when you see there's a tons of simulator, if you most of you are from robotics major, right? And uh, can someone close the door? I'm not sure what kind of a simulator have uh, have you used before. There's a most popular one, the Majoko, and if you use ROS, ROS, you use Gazebo, right? And uh, no matter what simulator, there's a Wiibot uh, and also <coughs> VRAP, right? There's tons of different simulators. All of them are doing the same thing, as I mentioned. They're solving differential equations. It's just as the number of objects in the environment become large, and the interaction between objects become complicated, like there's colliding, and the differential equations associated with those kind of uh, behavior is much more difficult to solve. Okay, so, so all the simulators are basically are solving differential equations, especially nonlinear, ordinary differential equations. And uh, we were talking about last time about, the key thing I want to remind you is, uh, we are dealing with dynamic systems, right? Not static. Can you tell me the difference between dynamic and static? You? Say that again. You have a function. You also do okay. So dynamic system are typically modeled by differential equation, and static is just a mapping. 
static mapping. If you see the, if you give input output immediately, so up, right? For dynamic system, it's differential equation, so it has time for the system to evolve over time. And the solving differential equations, uh, differential equation is just a mathematical model of your system, okay? At least in this class. And you have learned differential equation before in your calculus or in other uh, class, but but we emphasize a kind of, a, I would say, standard way to view differential equation that is easier for us to design controller with the state space model. Okay, we don't want to deal with high order differential equation. Okay, because knowing why, like in this system, second order, knowing why doesn't tell you everything about the system. You have to know why dot. Okay. So we have to introduce additional things. So Y and Y dot together gives you a complete picture of the overall status or state of your system. Okay, so we introduce the state. The main purpose is transform high order system into first order system. So we're dealing first order system. The only compromise we have to take is that we are dealing with not scalar variables, we are dealing with vector variables now, okay? Instead of dealing with high order differential equation in R1, we are dealing with first order system, very simple, but in Rn. That's why we practice a lot of linear algebra because we're dealing with Rn space. Okay, they're equivalent, the description of the system. All right, I hope you can, uh, Remember that, and also one thing I want you to always remember is the state is the information needed for future evolution, it separates future from the past. This is a word, this is a, it's a plain language description. Mathematically, what it means is that given the state vector, your future behavior is completely determined by your current state and your future input. It does not depend on the past history of your system. Okay, it's a, it's a, as an example, if I'm standing here, it doesn't matter how I got here today, right? My future location just depends on where I am now and how I'm going to move in the future. That's it, okay? That mathematically just means giving X and the future input, you can completely determine your future behavior. Okay, that's the purpose of state. Okay, uh, there's continuous time, discrete time, and they're almost the same. It's just one that's uh, evolved using derivative speed, the other one evolved due to what? The delta change, right? Or directly specify the next time step state vectors. And when the system is linear, then we have a A, B, C, D matrix. So it means the F function, the vector field, or the state update function is a linear function of the state and the control. Okay, that's basically everything we learned. And we also, uh, do several examples last time, including the PID controller description using state space model. All right. I think last time we stopped roughly here, right? From continuous time to discrete time. So in this, this class, we learn everything through discrete time. We can almost equivalently present almost everything in continuous time, but we just choose to do discrete time. And but sometimes our circuit, our spring damper system or mechanical system they are described by differential equations. We want to discretize it over time. So we use what typically Euler is enough, okay? Euler differential equation, and last time we were here, right? We derived a general form how to obtain the discrete state update equation from the continuous time vector field. This F and FD are different, okay? So let's uh, take a further look. If we focus only on, if we focus only on this uh, uh, linear system, and uh, we can have a more useful formula. Okay, let's say using the previous, using the previous nonlinear result. Okay. If I have, this is our F, X and U, right? This is our H, X and U. That's our vector field and the output equation. Okay, so we can use our previous step stuff. So what does this mean? Basically, it's very simple. It means 
the next time step xk plus 1 equal to current time xk plus the change. The change is the velocity times the time interval. If you're traveling along certain velocity, think about moving in the vector in Rn or R2. You're traveling with some velocity, vector field velocity, right? And times delta t, that's the change you're going to uh, incur during this time interval. Then the next time step, xk plus 1 is, is completely determined. And so that's very simple now. It's uh, xk plus 1 equal to xk plus what? What's the velocity? Huh? It's just i of x u, right? It's uh, a c, the continuous time is, times x at time k. x k is x at time k. Time k means the k times that, right? It's, it's, it's the k is time discrete time. And the b c times current time u k. That's my velocity vector field, velocity, current velocity I'm having, and times delta t, right? So the velocity time, time interval gives you the change you're going to make during this time interval, okay? And if you group some terms, what term are the same? xk and xk here. And so that I have xk plus this, this is identity plus ac times delta t, xk, okay? And this is BC times delta T. This is UK. Any questions? All right, I hope that's fine. And we call this one my AD, discrete time A matrices, okay? This is my B of D, okay? Uh, yk, let's say yk equals to c continuous time xk plus d continuous time u of k. yt equal to ac, uh, c, c, xt, d, c, u, t. So this relation does not involve any differentiation, right? It's a static relation. It's a static relation. We don't need to do Euler difference approximation. Okay, it's the same. It holds for all for all the t, including t equal to k times delta t, right? So that's why you have this exactly. I don't think I need to do anything to discretize it. These two are the same. And this will be my C D. This is my D of D. Okay. Overall, from this continuous time model, this is my continuous time model, and I can obtain my discrete time model with sampling time delta t, then uh, I, I will have a state space model. Next time step, x equal to a d x k. So this time state times the state update equation a matrix b d u k yk equal to cd xk plus dd u of k. All right. I think sometimes, I mean, this is a <clears throat> very simple, but sometimes some people don't get it in class. That's fine. With one exercise after class, you will get, get it pretty um, easily, I think. You finish this slide? Okay, I'm going to upload all the slides. If you miss certain part, I think that's fine. Okay, so we are dealing with discrete time most of the time. And also we are dealing with linear theory. Modern control theory, by default, somehow it's a linear system theory, okay? And it's not nonlinear. If nonlinear class, it will be called nonlinear analysis or nonlinear control. So, but the majority of the system model is, or majority of the system we're interested in, including most of the robotic system is nonlinear. Okay, how do we, how do we obtain a linear model? First of all, all the models are wrong, right? 
all the models are wrong, some are useful. Okay, it's just a matter of whether that model serves your purpose accurately enough. Okay, so <clears throat> suppose you are given a nonlinear model. Most of the time it is. <coughs> you need to find a linear model. <coughs> How do we do it? You must have heard of, uh, have you heard of linearization around some operating point? Not really. Mei Xue Guo Xian Xing Hua, right? Huh? Linearization. You did not hear it. You have heard it. What does it mean? MATLAB. You have learned MATLAB, right? What class did you learn this? The MATLAB class is about linearization. What is linearization? Linear regression. Okay. Uh, for example, the airplane we all take, right? You come to Shenzhen, you may take airplane, right? And you have to linearize. For example, I, I say the takeoff angle, typically maybe five degree or whatever, 10 degrees. And you linearize your model around that degree. That's the pitch. It's the pitch or the yeah, pitch. Okay, and you linearize it, you have a linearized model, then you control that. If you find another angle, you linearize around it. That's the, roughly how they do it. I'm not sure whether they do it nowadays, but at least for the majority of the airplane, they do it. Okay, uh, so let's see how we are going to do linearization. Now let's see, uh, let's directly think about this time model, okay? It's equivalent the same for nonlinear, oh sorry, continuous time. So given the model, xk plus one, equal to f, and f may not be linear. If, if it is linear, we don't need to do anything. If it is not linear, we want to have a approximately linear model that is accurately enough around some local point. What do I mean? Let, let me just uh, roughly explain. Suppose I have a, a system like this, right? This is my x. This is my x, uh, fx. This is a nonlinear function, right? I say I want to linearize it. Can we use a linear function to approximate it? It's not linear. It's not possible to globally find a linear mapping to approximate it. But if you tell me, OK, that's my takeoff angle I want to have, all right? 10 degree. So locally around here, I think depending on how much you zoom in, right? Locally, this is flat. Okay, it's flat, almost linear. So it's like this. Okay, the closer you are to the point, the more linear it is, because Taylor expansion. Right, you f x can be equal to f x zero plus f x zero prime x minus x zero plus high order terms, right? Hot, high order terms. You all remember this, right? All the engineer student, engineering students take calculus to remember Taylor expansion and they use it for their entire life. That's the basic you have to know, right? Uh, what does this mean? That means locally delta f I would say that I would directly say delta f. Delta f is the change of the function value is locally approximately equal to the derivative times the change of x, right? And infinitesimally, what does it mean? Infinitesimal mass. Just wu chong xiao, ha wu chong xiao. Infinitesimally, you change around x zero. And the velocity, sorry, the derivative is just the ratio between the value of the function change divided by the uh, the x changes. All right. So that's a is this a linear relation? Okay, this is a linear relation now. Okay, it's not nonlinear anymore, but it holds only around that operating point. Okay. So for linearization, whenever someone asks you to do linearization, the first question you should take, you should ask is where is the operating point? 
where is the linearization point I'm going to linearize my system around. Okay, so <clears throat> typically you are given this and also a operating point. A point you are going to linearize your system around. Our goal is to find the linearized model around that point. And what do I mean by that? So uh, let's define. Let's say uh, I have uh, defined. I have a delta x is x minus x hat. x hat is my linear linearization point. And my delta u is u minus u hat. Your control also need to deviate a little bit from your operating point control. Okay. And then I also have delta y, the output is y minus y hat. Okay, what is y hat? If you plug in this x hat, u hat, that's the y hat. So you know, given the state, given the control, your system have some uh, operating point and you want to know deviating a little bit, just a tiny little bit around, away from that point, how your system behave. Can you use a linear approximation to approximate that division relation. Okay, so our goal is to find the relation of not the global x of f and x. Okay, f and x is nonlinear globally. We are looking for the relation of delta f versus delta x. Okay? Division. That's the only possibility you can have a good linear approximation. So that's delta x k plus one. I want to find approximately. I want to have a hat uh, delta x k, b hat delta u k, and sometimes I may some have some leftover term. It really depends whether the operating point is a equilibrium or not. Okay, I, this will be clear from my example later, okay? So this will be maybe non-zero if, if x hat, u hat is not an equilibrium. Okay, we, we briefly mentioned what equilibrium really means, right? Equilibrium means you plug in this into your state update your state remain at the same location. It doesn't change anymore, okay? It doesn't matter, you don't have to worry about this. Anyway, we're trying to find this kind of relation. Having a term here is fine. It's just a line, it's like a, a line passing through the origin versus a line not passing through the origin. Both are line, okay? The key to do this is the same as this Taylor expansion, right? You can just use Taylor expansion. Maybe technical challenge, I wouldn't call it challenge. Something that you may not be familiar with is, uh, I think you should be familiar with, by the way. But you may you may forgot. Uh, is the multivariate Taylor expansion or Jacobian definition, okay? Let's, uh, let's recall what that is. Have you heard about Jacobin? If you take robotics, you definitely have heard of Jacobin. The same thing, okay? It's the same thing. Uh, Jacobin matrix of a multivariable function, a function maps from Rn to Rm. Uh, so let's say I have a function, I have maps. I would directly give an example, I think. Jacobian, let's, let me define the first. Let's say, sorry, let's say I have a function, I have maps R3 to R2. Okay, it's a function of three variables, right? And the function value is in R2. You, you need to know what's the domain and what's the range, okay? The function takes a vector in R3 and throw out you or maps to a function a vector in R2. 
Okay, so if you write this function, it will look like this. I have one, uh, let's call it z, z1, z2, z3. I have two, z1, z2, z3. If you like to write every component out, that's the case. This is a vector in R2, right? And it takes in x, z1, z2, z3 in R3, maps it. But we can just write it like this. It doesn't matter, okay? It's a shorthand notation for this. And that's the definition is what? Jacobian. Jacobian is defined as partial f, partial z. It's a matrix, partial f i, partial z of j. It's a m by n matrix. Okay, so J's element, uh, how to say? Let me, uh, is that my, I will say, let me define this way, sorry. So it's partial F, partial Z, this is a matrix, right? The I's row, J's column is partial F I, partial Z of J. It, that's if I write it out, if I have this example, let me call this example, okay? In this example, partial F, partial Z is how many rows? How many rows? I'm row N column, what is M here? What is M? Two, oh, uh, three. M is three, two, okay. Yeah, two, I see someone like this. You can speak out, okay. You can show R, okay, R, hold on. M is R, hold M is two. N is what? Three. The Python recognition, three, three, two, two, right? I mean. Okay, so it's nothing but I have one, partial I Z1, partial I have one, partial Z2, partial I have one, partial Z3. Have you learned this? I think you should, right? And partial I have two, partial Z1, partial I have two, partial Z2, partial I have two, partial Z3. That's a Jacobian, isn't it? It's just a way we arrange those partial derivatives. And what does this... Uh... Okay. <clears throat> so, what, I mean, do you need time to, does this make sense to you? What sense does it make to you? You can understand this expression, right? But what does it mean? Why do we have to do this? Why do we define this? It tells you infinitesimally the change in x, the input. How much it leads to change in f, the output, right? So basically what you have is df Roughly, roughly, okay? DF is a partial F, partial Z, DZ. If you write it out, partial F1, partial XZ1, partial F2, partial Z2, partial F1, partial Z2. Uh, I don't want to write it everything. But you take DZ1, DZ2, DZ3. It is... This, this means what? If you perturb your input z a little bit, this is the rate it changes, right? So this times this is the change of the function value, the first coordinate function value due to change in dz, in z1, right? 
this one is the change of f1 due to change in this, uh, the z2. Uh, right? Uh, ha -ha. Are you with me? Okay, any questions? So overall, your change, your change is in R2, right? F is a value in R2. Your change in R, uh, F is due to changes in Z1, Z2, Z3. It's nothing but this partial derivative time the change. It's just the first, it's a scalar uh, version of this. You extend that to the vector version of it, okay? It tells you how much change in dz lead to how much change in the df, in the f domain. Okay, that's the Jacobian purpose. Uh, let's take an example. Let's look at the example. That's very uh, simple example. Let's call it, uh, let's, linear, uh, let's find the Jacobian. So Jacobian is partial f, partial z, evaluate z. So it's, uh, it's nothing but, partial f1, how many, uh, first of all, can you tell me what's the dimension of this? So f maps are what? What's the dimension of the input? Z, how many components of Z I have? Three, how many output dimension I have? Two, oh, it's the same example almost. So R3 to R2. So the matrix will be three by, two, uh, hold on, two by three in this case, okay? So I have, this will be my F1, okay, of Z. And Z has Z1, Z2, Z3. So this will be F partial F1, partial Z1. What is it? Let me directly write it down. What is it? Uh, it's two, right? What about partial F1, partial Z2, E to the Z2, okay? What about partial F1, partial Z3? Zero, yeah. Oh, whenever I give a numerical example, you guys can, can speak out more, okay? That's, that's amazing, okay? Um, okay, F, partial F2, partial, Let's say partial F2, partial Z1, zero, okay? Then you are better than me, okay? Uh, partial F2, partial Z2, minus one divided by Z2 squared, okay? And three is one over Z3, okay? It's a function of the state as well. It's a function of the input variable as well. We need to evaluate this as Z hat, which is one, two, three, okay? If you plug in that, it's this is two, doesn't change. And this is e to the two. This is zero, zero. And what we have is negative one divided by four and one third. Okay? If I gave you this matrix, the first thing I want you to remember or think of is the following. Can you tell me what's the meaning of this guy? What's the meaning of this guy here? If you change, you perturb your second input, second input variable, Z2, infinitesimal a little bit, then the output will change, right? And the second component of output will change proportionally to, to that input, and the proportion where the, the slope is one, Negative one over four, okay? Am I correct? Okay, if you like to think about the way I want you to think is also these are linear combination of columns of this Jacobian matrix, right? So your input dimension change will cause your output vector change, okay? So it's, there are linear combination of this. So, so a little bit change of this, the whole function value will be changing and that rate is the second column of this. So each component has a meaning. I hope you know the meaning, not just the number. Okay, with that, we know everything about linearization. The rest is just an exercise. 
but I know you like exercise more than the theory. Let's do exercise. Oh, well, we need to write this out. So basically, <clears throat> if I have a Taylor expansion, let's say I have Rn to Rm, okay, I can do the Taylor expansion around this by just doing this. What does this mean? If I'm close to z hat, my function value will be z hat plus the derivative or the slope of my chain, but it's just a vector thing of slope. Can you imagine? So slope, typically it's number, right? If you are like this, there will be a slope. The ratio of the change of value divided by the divided by the change in the x domain, right? This is a delta x change versus delta f change. In multivariable, it's just a matrix. Is that easy to understand? Or at least that something is okay for to think of now, okay? So it's just this times dx. This is dz, right? This is the partial f, partial z. So it's, it's just what I'm writing down here, okay? That's the first order approximation, of course approximation which we don't care or it's a little bit too much to care and <clears throat> given this formula we can linearize arbitrary nonlinear function in Rn um, arbitrary nonlinear mapping from Rn to Rm okay and using that we can obtain roughly approximation of the nonlinear equation let's look at example another example a concrete formula so this may be my vector field or state update equation function. Some people may ask me, Professor, there is no xk, there's no uk, or no xt, there's no ut. Those are dummy variables, okay? You may use this word, dummy variable. Yeah, be careful. It seems like Dummy variable is, I can call it a, B, C, D, E, F, G 都没有问题，对吧？它只是一个一个代名词在这儿。OK， 我只叫 x k 也好，但是关键的是什么？我要是你给我一个 number of this， 我就能 map 到一个。这个是什么？这个是 from， 比如说哈，我们 x belong to R n， u belong to R what m， that's our notation convention， right？ So this f can you tell me what is it? If it is a state space model, that's definitely the mapping from Rn cross Rm maps to Rn, right? Either in vector field or discrete time update equation. So you gave me a state vector in Rn, gave me an input vector in Rm, I can give you a number in Rn that either tells you where you move next time if the if it, is, if it is a discrete time, or tells you what's the velocity you are going to travel during the, during the next few, oh, sorry, instantaneous velocity in RA, okay? So that's a mapping here. Uh, <clears throat> then I want to linearize it around something like this, then I do the Taylor expansion. This is exactly the Taylor expansion I'm writing out, plus high order term I'm skipping. Can you see the difference? This is exactly the same as this. You may tell me, oh, I have an X and U be above, a, you have a Z, but Z is a vector. So uh, let me just explain a little bit more. For example, I can call Z here is X and a U in R n plus M, okay? I can stack them together, as a matter, it's still a vector, okay? So, <clears throat> so my function here is nothing but fz. Can you tell, can you see that? I can arbitrarily call certain part of my state a particular name. So z hat is nothing but x hat u hat, okay? And fxu is just fz, because these two are the same is a function of x, u is a function of z. They are equivalent, okay? It's just the way I arrange them. And the plus, 
if x hat u hat, uh, sorry, so that's equal to the Taylor expansion will be, you just plug in that Taylor expansion, this Taylor expansion, okay, f z hat. f z hat is just f x hat u hat. Plus partial f partial z. Okay, but I can group them like a partial f partial x and a partial f partial u. Delta x, delta u. Okay, plus high order terms. If you still don't see it, let me just let me just, uh, if you say partial f, partial z, you will have what? You will have partial f1, uh, okay, partial f1, partial z1. This is a partial f2, partial z1, all the way, right? The second column will be partial f1, partial z2, okay? Eventually, we'll have a uh, partial f1, partial zn, okay? Later we'll have partial f1, partial zn plus one, all the way to partial f1, partial zn plus m, because our z is n plus m. So this part, you are doing partial f1, partial x, z1 is nothing but x1, okay? You are doing just the same thing, like this is nothing but partial f, partial x. This is nothing but partial f, partial u. So I group them together, I put a bigger matrix. It's just, I call certain part of the matrix that way, it's fine, okay? So essentially, this is my dz. If I write it out, it will be this. Okay, I think that's good enough for most of you. I spent too much time and space here. Uh, Let's say I apply this to uh, my state space model. Okay, I apply to the state space model. <clears throat> so I can have, uh, I already defined it, right? So now let's define it in a more explicit. Let's say delta xk, let's call it xk minus x hat. Delta uk is uk is uk minus u hat. It's just at any given time, your deviation from the operating point, okay? You only care about how much you deviate from it, the difference, okay? And uh, now, based on my this definition, what do you think my delta is k hat? The definition will be x k plus one minus this, all right? What I'm trying to find is a relation between this and this, okay? The delta at the current time and the delta at the next time, how do they relate? Uh, I don't think I have space, but let's, let's try. Uh, uh, let's see. I can say delta xk plus one equal to, or by definition is this, right? By definition is this, so it's xk plus one minus x hat. So xk plus one is fxk uk. That's my state update equation. I want to relate to previous time step, so I have to use f to trace back to the last time. Are you with me? Minus x hat, right? This is fine. Now we want to do linearization, okay? So this is approximate, I expand this, right? Taylor expansion of this nonlinear function around this guy. So I'll have f x hat, uh, sorry, f x hat u hat. That's my operating point plus the change. If I'm away, if I'm here, x hat u hat, I don't have any change. If I'm away from this operating point, my function value will be different. The difference is guaranteed by the slope, the vector value slope, the matrix slope times the division, which is a partial f, partial x, 
evaluate at what? x equal to x hat, u equal to u hat. Function this times the plus partial f partial u evaluate at x equal to x hat, u equal to u hat times delta u. Okay, that's my Taylor expansion already. Of course, plus, uh, sorry, there's one more term. I, I have to minus this guy. So minus x hat. So overall, I have, by definition, I call this guy my a hat. I call this guy my b hat. This is a matrix, right? This is n by n matrix. This is n by m matrix. So overall, I have, this is equal to a hat times delta x k. Oh, sorry, this is k, this is k. And plus b hat delta u k. That's this two term, and also you need to minus this guy. So minus x hat. Okay, if I want to summarize my result is delta x k plus one equal to a hat delta x k plus b hat delta u k and plus this minus this plus f x hat u hat minus x hat okay this guy is zero if x hat equal to f x hat u hat that means your equilibrium you stay here, you're using this control, next time you're also here. You can use the same control to keep you here forever at equilibrium point, okay? It's zero if that's the case. If not zero, it's fine. Whatever, that's, you can left over. Uh, where my A hat, by definition, is this guy. B hat, by definition, is this, okay? We'll see examples that will be a little bit more clear, I think, uh, I think roughly you see the idea is fine. It's Taylor expansion, and that's it. Uh, for for here, for the output equation, it's easier because we don't have a, a difference of equation or difference equation. Uh, so delta y k equal to y k minus y hat, right? Our definition of y hat is h x hat u hat, all right? So what I have now is yk is h of xk uk. By definition, that's the case, right? Minus h x hat u hat. You see that? This is already, you do tele expansion here, you got this, this uh, uh, let me write this tele expansion. This is tele expansion is around x hat u hat plus partial h, partial x, times xk delta, partial h, partial u, delta uk, okay, plus high order term I don't want to use. And this is minus h hat u hat. You see these two things got crossed out, all right? So, so what essentially I have is uh, these two term. I call this guy my C hat, this guy my D hat. Any questions? All the, okay, all the dimension is the same as we defined the Jacobian. Okay. <clears throat> So eventually we will have this term as well. So C and the D is defined like this. Of course, you need to evaluate at the current operating point. Let's jump to an example. I think that become more clear with some numbers. You like you guys like the numbers. Um, this is x k plus one, and this guy is my f x k u k. Okay. The first question is. Is this nonlinear or linear? Nonlinear, you see sine cosine, right? It's nonlinear. Not only that, you see x1 plus, uh, times x2 is nonlinear. And 
what is the uh, x dimension? R2, right? What is the u dimension? Is also R2? Oh, R2. Okay, so my f is R2 cross R2 to R2. Can you see that? If you give me R2, x give me R2 u, I give you R2. That R2 means next time step state. And this is y, okay? This is my h, x, and u. Okay, so h, x, k, u, k. Uh, let me just use that. Okay, then I need to calculate everything. So what is a hat? It's just partial f, partial x. Evaluate at x equal to x hat, u equal to u hat. What? So by definition, this if you think about, okay, f is a function of x and u. When I do partial of x, that means I view f as a function solely depending on x, and u is fixed as constant, right? If you think about that, then f is a mapping from r2 to r2 now. So what you got is f1, x1, f1, x2. Huh. Uh, I think we have to stop because my So we have <clears throat> This case, uh, uh, <clears throat> the linearization, linearized model, linearized model uh, have A, B, C, D matrix. The A is a partial F, partial X, which is in this case we have uh, F one is this row, right? F one is this row, F one of X and the U. The second row is F two, so F one, F one partial F two, partial F one partial X. Two, and this is partial x2, partial x1, partial f2, partial x2. <coughs> Excuse me. This is uh, evaluated at some x hat and u hat, right? So let's do some basic calculation for this derivative. Uh, you need to tell me the answer. I'm bad at this. Partial f1, partial x1. Zero, okay. What about partial f1, partial x2? Sine is a cosine, uh, this one, or take derivatives, cosine x2 of k, okay? What about the second row? f2, x1, it's x2 of k. f2 of x2, is f1 of k, okay? But then you need to evaluate at uh, x hat, u hat. So what you got is uh, x are all zero. So this is zero, zero, zero. This is cosine zero is one. Okay. I have this simple matrix. That's my A matrix. <clears throat> Let me repeat again. What does this mean, this number? So if you change x1 a little bit, f doesn't change, okay? It doesn't change too much. That's all it means, okay? Uh, so let's say b, b is partial f, partial u, okay? And this is x hat, u hat. And uh, u is uh, also r2, so it's the same thing. So you have a partial f1, uh, I wouldn't write this out completely. Let's directly write down the answer. So that's, uh, let's see, partial f1, partial u1 is zero. Partial f1, partial u2 is this guy, right? It's not negative sign uh, u2 of xk. 
Parsha F2, parcel U1, it's U2. And this is U1, okay? And the evaluate X hat U hat. So I got, I got the U, U2 is half pi, sine half pi is, this is negative one, this is zero. This is uh, zero, this is uh, half pi. Okay, that's my B matrix. Somehow it's also two by two. My C hat is partial H, partial X. The same thing. In this case, the dimension of, of output is one. Okay, so I only have one row. So that will be my partial H, partial X1, partial H, partial X2. That's my C matrix dimension. Evaluate this, and you can check. That will be, well, we, can, we don't need to check. We can directly see the answer. That will be two. This is a negative sign, X2 of K, right? So I will have uh, two and a zero, that's my C matrix. And the D hat is what? What is partial H, partial U? There's no U, so that's not depend on U. So the partials are all zero, but it's a dimension. What is the dimension? What is the dimension here? Huh? One by two. So will be zero, zero. The dimension has to match. Otherwise, even in MATLAB, it will give you error, right? So partial H, partial U1, partial H, partial U2. You, it does not depend on U1, U2, so both are zero. Again, zero means change U doesn't change the output. Of course, it does not even depend on it, okay? So, <clears throat> so that's already got the linearization around this point. Do you know how to do, do linearization now? That's a toy example. I think in the homework or in project, you are going to linearize um, at least a inverted pendulum, right? So that's famous example or other more involved example. Okay, what we have learned so far is linearize a nonlinear to get a linear model. We got also a way to transform from continuous time to discrete time. Now let's say there's something you are familiar with, at least you are supposed to be familiar with, is the transfer function. So how do we obtain transfer function? Because that's also sometimes it's useful for you to think about. Do you still remember what transfer function is? Huh? Transfer function is what? What is called transfer function? All right. Let's say I have a system. Suppose I have a linear system. Again, my notation, Rm, y is Rp. Okay, I have, a system is nothing but a mapping from input to output. There are different ways to describe them. The way we learn so far is state space or differential or difference equation. But this is all in time domain. And what we have learned in signal systems and also in control systems is, let me first write it down, because in time domain, In time domain, system is modeled 
as differential or difference equation, right? And we can make it a, a state-space model. <clears throat> but what you have learned before is in frequency domain, or you like to transform it into the frequency, the so-called frequency domain. So system is modeled as a transfer function. So frequency domain roughly, so if you have, this is in time domain, okay, this is time. In frequency domain, if a discrete time, I have in Z domain, this is u of z, if I say u of z, that's typically my z transform my, of my input signal. This is the same system. I have the z transform of my output signal. And transfer function in the z domain is nothing but yz divided by uz, okay? But in scalar case, at least what we have learned before, in scalar case, this is our transfer function. They are the same, right? Do you remember? This guy is the Z transform of the time domain signal, and the Y is the Z transform transform of the upper signal. What's the definition of Z transform? If you gave me a signal like XK, the Z transform is defined as this power series summation. You've learned this change? Do you remember what it is? Z change. I haven't learned Z change. You've learned that. Then I'll stop this part. If you don't know, then there's no meaning. Okay? Let's do an example. 就不需要 transfer function 的 example. OK, 呃、uh, suppose 你们已经有了这个无瓣图 ，OK， 是吧 ？I'm not sure whether it works or not. I'm still learning Python, OK, and、uh, learn the same way like you do. OK. <coughs> That's the I per. I, I don't. Can you see it? How can I use larger font? That font. Control J. Okay, good. Okay, good enough for us, right? So we have A B C D matrix. That's our state space model. And、uh, in this、uh, SciPy signal, I think there's a state space model、uh, package. And in MATLAB, there's more packets, of course, but we, we want to divorce MATLAB, okay? We want to use、uh, Python in the future. So I can create my system. My system, let's say my sys equal to、uh, a sig dot state, oh, here, state space model A, B, C, D. What else I need? Maybe not.、Uh, dt equal to zero. Let's see that. I'm not sure whether it works or not. I need to select this. Okay, it's finished. If you print, let's say my sys.、Uh, of course, that's a discrete time. Uh, sorry, that the discrete. State space model. That's a state space model, basically. And I can、uh, let's see. How do I add more code here? Let me clear. Okay, add code.、Uh, let's see a step function. Okay. Let's、uh, let's say t equal to、uh, numpy dot lin space、uh, from zero to ten, and I have a A thousand points, 
maybe. And then I need a state space model. If you want to simulate anything, you need to do, uh, you need to have what? Initial state, right? Initial. So x0, let's, let's say my x0 equal to negative one, one, okay? Then I think I should be able to simulate that. So uh, t, y equal to uh, my sys, no, sorry. So sig, what is the sig? I have this sig, okay, sig dot uh, step. That's step, do no step response. Okay, step response, then I use my sys, uh, x0, so x0 is my x0. That's my time range. Uh, that's t, that's good enough, okay? Then I can plot, plt dot plot, t and y. Error. What is it? What? Huh? PLT, not PLG, not a pig, not plug. PLT. Error again. <laughs> huh? Comma Y, the mla. Uh boys. They in guy okay? Woman continuous time see ya. Oh can I be out DT super high there. Ah, continuous time, holla. Okay, that's step response, okay? You got step response. You want to see how the step response evolve over time? Let's say 100, let's say 50, okay? Let's see. This looks like a first order system, right? It's like a temperature control, things like that. It's a second order state space model. You just simulate a second order state space model. Okay, uh, let's do, let's say now, Let's take a look at discretization. Discretization is change from continuous to discrete. It's not linearization, okay? Discretization. Suppose I have a dt equal to uh, 0.1. So I can say, um, I can say my discrete time sys, my note, is my sys, my sys, my sys, uh, hold on, my sys dot to discrete, okay, dt, that should be enough. I'm not sure, let's check. I have a discrete time version of it. If I want to print this discrete time sys, I have this two, this uh, A, B, C, D, that's my new A, A, B, C, D matrix. What do you think this A matrix, how does that relate to the previous A? This is my previous A, right? What's the relation? If you look at my our derivation before, um, what, what it, what, what's it here? AD is AC times delta T plus identity, okay? In this case, our delta T is uh, 0.1, right? Times AC plus identity, identity is 1, 0, 0, 1, right? So uh, if you look back of this, so that will be, this is 1 minus, uh, 1 plus, right? Uh, this is minus 2, right? So it's point zero, uh, negative zero point two, times point one is point zero zero two, zero two. Sorry, then it's yeah one minus zero point zero two is uh, one uh, is zero ninety eight. Okay, roughly that. So it's a discretization we obtained. Of course, I think this is more accurate if we specify uh, my third. I think it's my third equal to Euler. Where the, well, the, the result we derived was uh, Euler, right? 
So if we use this, it's exactly our, we don't have any other kind of a numerical error anymore. This is the Euler method, just one minus 0.2 times 0.1 is exactly 0 0.98, okay? So that's Euler method. If you don't use Euler method, that's what's more accurate. We didn't learn how to do it yet. Uh, you need to take other class, but Euler will be good enough for most of the time, okay? Okay, now let's uh, simulate. Uh, let's simulate. Let's say our, we simulate discrete time system. Let's, um, I don't know how to do it. T and Y equal to a sig dot discrete time step. Okay, our DT system. Uh, x0, we still have the same x0, let's say x0, t, no, I don't have t anymore, sorry, this time I should have, uh, uh, I should have n equal to number of steps, okay, how many steps I have, by the way, uh, this is a uh, 50, I still have five, 500, okay? 500 will be equivalent to the above figure. Let me do this here, okay? Uh, let's say plot, uh, PLT, sorry, PLT plot, T and Y. I think this, I need Y dot squeeze. Oh, sorry, numpy dot squeeze, squeeze, y, because these y's have some complicated structure. It's the same, okay? It's this cross simulation, but if I use, a, let's say I use a larger dt, the dt is one, so I discrete time, the order, right? I have a dt is one, one is not that good, but uh, then I, because I want to simulate the same range, then my t total number of steps I'm simulating will be smaller. So I only simulate up to 550. So that's, it's still the same, okay? Roughly okay, then if I do uh, 10, can you, let's see what happens. It doesn't, it, so discretization, you have to make sure your delta t is small enough. In this case, small enough does not include 10, okay? You should be smaller. The smaller, the more small, the smaller you have the default delta t, the dt, and the more accurate your simulation will be, right? Too large, your, your simulation of discretization will be not accurate anymore. So I think point one will be good enough for, for, for this example, okay? Uh, let's eliminate this. Another way to do simulation, so I think, how much time I have? I, I think we can, okay. I think we can give one more example. So let's not use the building uh, state space model because we don't know what's going on. What I'm telling is that all, this, all the model we are dealing with is just nothing but ODE, right? We just directly, let's directly use ODE solver. In Python, ODE can be easily solved. Uh, let's try to, uh, let, me, let me think. Let's define our, for ODE, all you need to specify the derivatives of your differential equation. I think I can, I can use this example here. That's my example. I... I tried this morning, okay, that's my ODE. Okay, oh, I need to import from SciPy ODE integration and then define my ODE. And this is my ODE, it's the same thing I can define it. This is my simulation of a state space model, not the built-in simulation, okay? You just need to tell them what's the x dot. x dot equal to a times x plus b times u. In, in Python, 
matrix multiplication. Uh, you can, you can, there's different ways, but uh, this at symbol can do the, the matrix vector multiplication. And you, you return x dot. What does it mean? If you give me x vector, this tells you x dot. This basically specify what? I function, the vector field. OK? You said, OK, I have function. This I have function is, uh, it should be a function of a state and the and input, right? But the input I, I, I specify here. This means a step function, right? Unit step. U is always 1. For whatever time, U is always 1. That's my, and for, for that one, I can plug this. And this is my, I think I should have the same initial state. What's, what's my state, initial state before? 191 or what? Let's copy this part, okay, let's say, to my, to our example, lecture note two example. Let's do here. What was my uh, initial state? Initial state is uh, uh, negative one one. Okay, so let's use that again. Negative one, negative one, and one. Let's only do fifty here. Then O D integration my O D E. So tell O D E this function. This function just tells you at any given time and any given state, in this case x, what is my derivative? Then I will have the x over the entire trajectory and my y is just a c times that. So I can do this, I think. Uh, it's the same, that's our own simulation, okay? I'm not calling step function, just our own simulation. You can simulate anything you want just as simple as a couple lines of code, although I'm still learning Python. For example, I can change this. I, I don't have to have a step function. I can say sine. I can say sine t. Oh, do I need to use numpy.sign? Okay, now just numpy, numpy array or as array. Sinusoidal input gave you a sinusoidal output. That's a linear system, okay? So you can simulate arbitrary input, you can simulate arbitrary output, uh, sorry, arbitrary input response. And step response is just the response to the step input function, okay? Uh, maybe I will give you more examples later on, so for how to simulate this stuff, and that's enough. If you don't know transfer function, I, I think that I don't need to join connections to the fun transfer function. So let's directly talk about the next one, the next lecture, least squares. Uh, okay, let's get started. So today I'm going to first go back to lecture note two, okay, the state space model. I think we have to finish the Z transform part because we are going to use it quite a bit later in this class. We are dealing with discrete time system most of the time, discrete time system most of the time. So, so Z transform is somehow we are going to use, use it quite a bit later in this class, so we have to cover it. If you haven't learned it from your early class, then I have to do the job. But I don't think I can teach you Z transform within uh, one or two lectures. So I would just assume you can self-learn a little bit. Let me just uh, briefly cover the essence of Z transform so that you can start using it, okay? You can think about the Z transform of, as a discrete time version of Laplace transform. I assume you know Laplace transform, right? And if you have discrete time signal, 
you will have Z transform. The counterpart of Laplace transform in discrete time, that is Z transform. And uh, we can actually, th this is the definition. If you still have the, uh, the lecture note, this is the definition of Z transform. So given the discrete time signal XK, Z transform is that it maps, so basically given any complex variable Z, they will compute another complex variable called XZ, that's a mapping from Z domain, right, to a complex domain. And the definition is given like this, okay? It's in terms of power series. Why it looks like this, let's uh, recall. I'm still recalling, I'm not teaching you this transform, okay? Um, but I have to cover enough so that you can follow roughly what's going on. So recall, uh, I'm not sure where we should just start our review. I assume you know Laplace transform, right? So you have a continuous time signal, continuous time signal, which is XT. Okay, that's, uh, let's draw it a little bit so that, suppose that's my XT, okay? And then I can, or in digital world, we don't, uh, we, there's no continuous time per se, right? It's, something always happens every delta T. So we can do sampling. How to do sampling? Mathematically, we can do it by, with delta function, right? Convolution with delta function. Okay, so this is a T, 2T, 3T. Okay, and uh, so we do this, eventually we will have a discrete time signal, just sample. Okay, that's our discrete time, that's called XD of T, but it's still a, so only this, only when small t equal to n times t, then it has value, right? So it, it will be like this. Uh, let me try to draw it, uh, this, this. You roughly see the idea, okay? That's uh, discrete times. I don't think I'm drawing that accurately. Anyway, that's the discrete time interval. You start having values, and but but you can write the relation between the discrete time signal as the as the following. It's a summation from k from zero to infinity, x k times t. Uh, let me use not square. Let's use uh, parentheses times delta t minus k times t. Right? When small, okay, so this is a function of small t. That's a continuous time variable. And this function only has value when t equal to k times t for some k. Okay, that's a discrete time signal. So, so this is, a, we can also write it like x, just like a, a, a I, this is no longer a, a continuous time, like I'm not writing anything different, it's just I'm trying to say this is just some number at k times t, that number equals to a continuous time signal when small t equal to k times t. And the only time, only variable that depends on small t is the, in the delta function. Okay, so roughly you can see this is the, uh, I'm, we're trying to relate discrete time from uh, with the continuous time, that's how it goes. Then let's take a Laplace transform, okay? Let's take Laplace transform of this. So Laplace transform of this xt, xd of t, which will give the following, right? So that's summation k from zero to n, uh, infinity. This is x, k, t. The Laplace transform of this one. Laplace transform of delta t is one. Laplace transform of t, delta t minus something, it's, it's a delay, right? So it's e to the negative what? S, k, t. Okay, that's the delay part. If delay is tall, then that's s tall, but delay is k times t, that's uh, k, t, okay? So that's the Laplace transform of the sampled signal. So it's a Laplace transform of the discrete signal, okay? But now if we define, so let's define, let's define Z as a new variable, 
Okay? I don't want to carry all these things over. Because so z equal to e to the st. That's, that's our definition or change of variable. It depends on how, uh, how we want to define the change of variable, but this one is particularly useful, so I've defined this as z function or z variable. z is nothing but e to the st. Okay? And then I can write this as what? Lapla transform this xd of the sample signal equal to summation k from 0 to infinity xk. Let's not call it t. Let, let me be precise, sorry. What I'm saying is that xk square is a discrete time signal. Okay, it is equal to x of continuous time when you evaluate the time at k times t. I'm not sure whether you can follow me. All right, let's make our notation a little bit more precise. So square means a discrete index. Okay, k means you refer to the original continuous time signal. You take the signal value at small t equal to k times capital T. Okay, uh, so if that's the case, then we are a little bit more precise. That's k times z minus k. Okay, this is fine. I'm deriving it. I'm not defining it even, okay? I'm deriving it. So this is what? This is our definition of z transform. Z transform is a Laplace transform of a sampled continuous time signal, okay? And the z variable relate to the s variable in particular way, z equal to e to the s t. So if the sampling time is different, then the z variable means different things, okay? So an important thing, I, I don't, I, then based on this definition, you can derive many, many, many properties, okay? There's a lot of property, convolution, delay, or I mean, there's a lot of property. I, I often emphasize you don't remember it. You, you should forget those details, right? But these definitions are important. Uh, another thing is that as domain, I assume you know, or maybe the only thing you remember after taking signal system or control class is something called open left half plane, right? This side, open left half plane. 十轴要小于零,对吧?就是要左平面。Okay, open left half plane. So what's the property of those this plane? Huh? Stable. Stable. Okay. So stability criteria often ask you to say the poles of the Laplace transform need to lie in the open left half plane. Okay, that's something you remember hopefully. But after you take the La uh, Z transform E S T. Okay? So that's a change of variable. This entire open left half plane becomes you, you think about the open left half plane, you, you just how how rapid become a circle, if you can imagine that. So that becomes the uni inside uni circle Y. Because S is a is real part and the imaginary part, okay? Open left half plane means the real part is less than one, uh, sorry, less than zero. So if you take the exponential, that means the norm is less than one, right? So this means z equal to this, the norm is less than one, right? If the real part is less than zero, that's almost like the norm of this exponential is less than one. So if the entire open left half plane got mapped to a in, the, the interior of the union circle, okay? So all your the key, key kind of message you got from your signal system or control system is stability or whatever convergence means open left half plane. Now in the z domain, you should say it 
inside unit circle. That's it. All right. That's uh, hopefully that's uh, how many minutes? Three minutes. Introduction to this transform or review. Are we good? Okay. So Z domain is also called, uh, we will also refer to called a frequency domain, right? It's, it's also, it's not time domain, right? So when we represent a uh, system, we can represent the in system in nothing mapping input signal to output signal. That's the purpose of the signal uh, system. And uh, in time domain, we can describe this mapping as a differential equation or difference equation. But we can also change the representation of the signal into Z domain. Okay? In Z domain, it somehow inherits the same property like a Fourier transform or Laplace transform. Any questions? Um, if you have questions, we can talk offline, okay? So um, so in the frequency domain, so that's the you can you can also it becomes a mapping from the input signal in Z domain to the output signal in, also in the Z domain. But in frequency domain, there's something unique. Uh, I still need some more space to talk about this. Unique is that uh, we should let's see. We can obtain the so-called transfer function. That's the equivalent representation of the differential equation or difference equation. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let me. Uh, I'm running out of space, but let's see that here. I have a system. That's my time domain, discrete time. Okay. In continuous time, this is a transfer function. Oh, sorry, in Z domain, this transfer function, but you need to map it to, you take Z transform the input signal. Okay. In the scalar case, actually, I assume you have learned this. If you haven't, just maybe somehow you can think this is analogous or similar to uh, the Laplace transform. In the scalar case, the HZ is yz divided by u of z. Okay. The output z transform divided by input z transform, the same as Laplace transform, because z transform is Laplace transform. The only difference is that I assume the signal doesn't change over sampling period. Okay, if I have a piecewise constant signal, that's basically roughly the Laplace transform of that particular signal. Okay, but that also has an additional property if you still remember that the, uh, the transfer function has to be what? This y has to be the called zero, zero state response, okay? The output, the transfer function, okay? The output has to be induced only from the input, okay? Because output have two parts, typically, it has two parts. One is because input, then give output. The other one is somehow they have initial conditions, right? Initial condition, without any input, you could also have a non-zero output. There's two parts. Transfer function doesn't care about the initial condition part. It's transfer, it transfer the input to output. So if you want to, uh, do the transfer function, you have to have it, you assume zero in initial state, you calculate the output, you take Z transform, you divide by the uh, Z transform of the, of the input, then you got uh, the transfer function, okay? Uh, for non-scalar, this is called MIMO. This is a multi-input. I don't think you learned uh, multi-input that much before. Multi-output, okay? For those kind of system, your transfer function become a transfer function matrix. Okay, in this class, as I mentioned, everything is a matrix. A scalar is a one by one matrix. Okay, so it's possible, but I think that you can imagine how it works. 
for example, I can say uh, my, for example, I can say my U signal belong to R2. My Y signal belong to R3. So I have two inputs, three outputs I care about. Okay, in that, in this block diagram, everything could be a, what? Vector, right? So it could be multi-dimension, that's what I mean, okay? And uh, if, let's say, for example, if U is R2, Y is R3, then Y of Z, if you take, take Z transform of Z, uh, of small y, you got capital Y, which is the transform of the small y. This is become Y1 of Z, Y2 of Z, and Y3 of Z. Okay? This Y is what? Y1 of K, Y2 of K, Y3 of K. Okay? How you can take Z transform or Laplace transform? Or vector element wise okay element by y exactly so most of the answer to my question is by definition because that's something you always forgot that's uh, that's the most important thing because you see the definition can this x small x be a vector from this definition, is that true? If the summation makes sense for small x be a vector, then the whole definition works. Okay, so if you plug in vector, you got vector out. Okay, and each element will be the corresponding z transform for that particular channel of uh, of signal. Okay, so in this case. We will say y, um, let's see, y2, for example, y2 of z, y2 of z actually should equal to h21 uh, z, u1 of z, plus h22 of z, u2 of z, okay? You will have a transfer function matrix. In this case, the transfer function is a matrix, is the number of rows equal to the to what? To the number of output. So this is 1, 1, z, 1, 2 of z, 2, 1 of z, 2, 2 of z, 2, uh, 3, 1, 3, 2. Okay, so that's the transfer function matrix. So in other words, the output of y2, the y2, it's due to two things from the input, right? This is one due to the input of the uh, U1. This is U2. And each of them has a particular impact to the output. Okay, that's the case. Because the superposition principle for linear system, you can, you can write it like this. Okay, I'm not sure how much you can get out of it. At least I want you to remember or somehow feel comfortable talking about Z transform and the Z transform of vectors. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, I need to add one more slide. Okay, now let's uh, go back to our, what, this guy. That's our state space model in discrete time, right? Let's call this, the first row, let's call the equation one. Let's call this equation two. Okay? There are two equations. Which one is a difference equation? The second one is? The second one is what? is a static relation between state and output, okay? Static versus dynamic. Dynamic is modeled by differential or differential. Static is nothing but a function. 
there's no other time. So you see, if you xk equal to something, then yk immediately reflect that change. If you change xk, you change yk immediately, right? So if d times u, if u change, if d is non-zero, then you can directly impact output. In MATLAB, or in other uh, simulator, this is called direct feed through. If you remember those kind of terms, that means you can directly impact output. That's typically not the case, by the way. So the second one is a static relation. It's not, it's, it's easy, okay? The first one is difference equation. And uh, two, uh, two it's, it's similar to the Laplace transform. If you remember what, xt, suppose xt correspond to capital XS. That's a Laplace transform, okay? Laplace transform, then x dot t correspond to s x s right minus x zero something like this right I'm not sure whether you remember this formula correctly but uh, but you have those kind of relation right but in discrete time uh, let's say I have a x k correspond to xz this is a z transform okay z transform Z transform, and uh, then what about X plus one? Oh, use the definition. You can derive it, or you, you can you can memorize some formula. It's fine in this case, but it's very easy to. Uh, let me. So this is k from zero to infinity, uh, x k, z to the minus k, right? The Laplace transform of this guy, let's call it x hat of z, okay? It's different from this capital X z. So it's what? Transform x k plus one z minus k. There's no k minus one anymore, right? It's a signal in terms of k. K is a dummy variable, but they are related. If you look at this, this is nothing but x0 plus z minus x1. Uh, I'm running out of space. Plus dot dot dot. I hope you can imagine what the, the terms in summation. But this guy is what? This guy is uh, x1, okay, times 0 z to the 0 is 1, right? Plus x2 times z minus 1, okay? If you compare these two, you find it out. This is nothing but z. If you plug, if you somehow pull out a z factor, this is xz minus z times x0. This is in time domain. This is uh, in, in the z domain, okay? So if you don't like this thing, you can memorize this, right? So the z transform of this will be this, all right? Okay, that's enough background. Let's apply it. Okay, apply z transform to equation one, the difference part, okay? So what we got? The left hand side, I get uh, what? Capital XZ minus Z, what? Small X0. Uh, Z small X0. And uh, the left hand, uh, right hand side is A times capital XZ plus B times capital UZ. Where A, B are these two matrix. Why we can pull them up? By definition. Okay? You look at definition, you will see the immediately. You don't remember any details. Just look at definition. How is defined? Oh, where is it, by the way? So this is defined as if you have an A matrix up front of a small, a small XZ, of course, you can pull it out. It doesn't depend on K. 
Okay, look at definition is everything you need to pay attention to. All right, so this should make sense to you now. Then let's rearrange. So this is a vector. This is a vector, this is a matrix, this is a matrix. Uh, I want to group these two terms, how should I do it? So this is Z times identity minus A, okay? Capital XZ equal to B times U of Z plus small z x0. Any questions? That's, this is fine, right? Why I need to multiply by i? Z is a scalar. Now it's a, a complex number, but it's a scalar. It's not a vector, right? Z times x equals z times identity times x. Then I can, this i a is, has the same dimension of identity, so I can do the uh, <coughs> Uh, typical matrix subtraction. All right, so then I can find it out my solution of this equal to what? I take inverse on both sides, then that's Z A Z I minus A inverse times B of U Z plus Z I minus A inverse times Z times X zero. Okay, that's the state response. Okay, that's a state response. Then apply Z transform to two. If I apply to two, the static relation, I immediately find out what? Y of Z equal to C of X Z plus D of U Z. There's no time shifting at all, There's, it's a static relation. But I can plug in this, right? I can plug in this X expression, then I can get the relation between input and the output. So that will be C, Z, I minus A inverse B of U of Z plus D, uh, let me group term together first, sorry. This is D, right? D times U, Z, there's also uh, this B plus D whole thing times U of Z, okay? Then plus this term, okay? This term I need to multiply by C, so it's C, Z, I minus A inverse, Z and the small this. Okay, any questions? I will upload my lecture note. Okay, so, so if you miss some part, it's fine. Just try to follow uh, our discussion. I thought I write very slow, but it seems like, um, of course, you need to write and listen. That's different. Uh, okay, now I'm going to ask you, what do you call this? Now this, do you remember the terminology for those? This guy is the output only due to input. If input zero, this part is zero, okay? This guy, this second part is the output due to initial state. If my initial state is zero, this part doesn't happen, okay? So that's, this is called this is called zero state response. The Chinese name is what? Zero, zero response. Zero input response. Right? Have you learned it? Uh, okay, that's fine then. Okay, zero state response and zero input response. These are the two part of it. But now we derive them from a Z domain. Okay, frequency domain. Okay, so what is our transfer function then? The transfer function is 
uh, let's use this. This will be the C Z I minus A inverse times B plus D. That's our what? Transfer function. Because Y of Z equal to H Z plus at times U of Z, right? And this is zero state response of Y. You don't care about the initial state. That's not the purpose or the job for transfer function. Transfer function only transfer input to output, okay? Okay, so now if I gave you A, B, C, D matrix, linear system, discrete time, then you should be able to find the transfer function, okay? Either transfer function in the scalar case or transfer function matrix. But to me, everything is matrix. <coughs> to you, if you want to distinguish those things, that's fine, okay? In the frequency domain, in, in, in S transform, in the Laplace transform, it's the same format. You just need to change Z to S. Okay, but I don't want to derive that. Because we are going to use Z transform a little bit uh, several places later in this class, so I have, to, uh, I have to review this for you. Any questions? Okay, now you know if, you, uh, if in MATLAB there's a transfer function, there's state space model, there's a change between them, now I know, or you know, from state space how to get transfer function. You can verify them, okay? And also, vice versa, give you a transfer function you can construct a state space model as well. But that's not unique, okay? There's an infinite ways of doing it. One particular way is called, well, the general case is quite complicated, by the way. So let's talk about a single input, single output case. Just give you, let you see the flavor of this kind of problem. I suppose I have a transfer function. Maybe you have seen this before. You definitely seen this when Z is S, okay? So if I want to put in a standard form, in the above canonical form, that means this guy. This is called a leading coefficient. It's one, okay? Do you have a polynomial of Z? The leading coefficient is one. You have to, if it's not one, you divide by, by whatever it is, make it one, okay? So that becomes a standard form and uh, so the problem we are trying to say is I gave you a transfer function, maybe this guy. Okay, I want you to find, find A, B, C, D such that, such that H of Z equal to C, Z, I minus A inverse B plus D. I want you to find A, B, C, D to achieve this. Of course, there's infinitely many of such A, B, C, Ds. Why? Because if you give me an A, B, C, D, I can say C is my, my C will be two of two times your C, okay? My B is half of your B, then fine. You see, there's many, many kind of places you can play with it without changing the transfer function. Okay, so one possible realization is that if I give you this standard form, then I can tell you a structure, this is, in a controllable canonical form. We're going to learn that later in this class. Okay, so that's, it looks like this, uh, zero. I hope you can imagine how to fill up those things. And everything is until the last, second last row, there's all zeros, except this is one. The last row is negative A zero, negative A one, all the way to negative A n minus one. Where A is the denominator polynomial uh, in the transfer function, okay? B is, it's, uh, I think, oh, B is very simple. It's zero, zero, all the way to the last element is one, okay? And the C is, in this case, B minus D zero minus A zero B n, B one minus A one B n, so all the way to B n minus one minus A n minus one B n, okay? And the D equals to B n. 
if you have a non-trivial BN, then you have a direct feed-through term. Because the, think about Z as a, as a K plus one, right? Okay, and you can, you should know my shorthand notation now, okay? So this is ver verify yourself. Okay, that means I don't care. You need to check it. So that's uh, verify yourself. C, Z, I minus A inverse B plus D equal to H of Z, which is this guy. Okay. Uh, if I give you this particular case, it's very easy to check. Just a few matrix multiplication. You may need to do a little bit symbolic operation, okay? In Python, your MATLAB both are simple to do these things. Let me give you a, a just a kind of a simple example. Typically, let's skip the example, but uh, since you haven't seen Z transform a lot, let's go through it so that you have a concrete meaning of what it is. So I think all of you have seen this kind of uh, relation in signal systems or maybe other class. What kind of relation is this? This is a difference equation, by the way, right? Discrete time difference equation. It tells you the input and output, how they are relate. Because they involve signal at different time, it's a difference equation, it's not a static relation. Okay, I want you to find, find state space model. Because you are going to learn every control design in state space. If I gave you a, a this kind of difference equation, how do you change to the state space and apply the method we learned in this class. That's the point. Find the state space model. How to find it? If you see this in your mind, I suggest you immediately already see the transfer function. Okay, I'm not sure whether you can do it, but let's say, let's apply Z transform, although you just learned Z transform, but I think you can apply it now, okay? Because if we care about the transfer function, we don't care about initial state, right? Assume initial state. Zero, sorry, zero initial state. Zero IC, okay? I dot C means initial state, at least in this class. So let's say small yk correspond to capital YZ, that's a Z transform. Okay, uh, symbolic relation, okay? So the actual expression depends on the signal. We are talking about symbolic relation now. So u of k correspond to capital U of z. Okay. So if you apply the, uh, the z transform on both sides, you get what? z times yz. Okay, you apply that the relation. This is a what? Plus one. That means you need to multiply by a z, z variable. And the three y k minus two, minus two means plus negative two. Okay, those are three z negative two y of z. If there's no initial state, everything becomes just very simple. Okay, two times z inverse capital U of z. That's the translation. Translate, you know what translate is, right? I translate that discrete time, time domain relation to a, a Z domain relation. They are equivalent, okay? So then I can see, okay, so YZ equal to what? 2Z minus 1UZ divided by Z plus 3Z back to 2. If I write it more carefully, That's my relation, input output. Because I assume zero initial state, that's the only thing I care about. This will be my transfer function, right? This is my transfer function transfer or my input to output. Okay, is this in the standard or canonical form? Look at this, okay? This is in terms of Z. 
Okay, let's change it into in terms of z. So this guy equal to I need to uh, multiply z square. Okay, so that will be uh, uh, z cube, right? Plus three. But then the numerator I also need to uh, multiply by z square, so I'll have two z. Okay, that's my transfer function, right? So if I want to write in the canonical form, I will say this is already that way, but I want to z zero times z square, zero times z plus three, okay? This is two of z. So in this case, n equal to three, a one equal to, let's see, a zero equal to three, right? This guy is a zero, so a zero is three, a1 equal to a2 equal to 0. And uh, yes, that's it. And the b part is b0 equal to 0, b1 equal to 2, and the b2 equal to b3 equal to 0. OK, there's no this term. So then plug in, you find the a, b matrix. OK, I don't have space. Uh, maybe I can make some space, okay? So then I can have A would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Only the last row has some non-trivial information. What is it? Negative A0, negative A1. What is A0? A0 is 3, so it's negative 3. All the other two is 0. Okay, that's my A. My B is, you don't need to do anything. B is always this. C will be 0, 2, 0. You can compute from the formula. I don't want to go through this tedious. So you can check. Now you can check with numbers, OK? This C times Z I minus A inverse times B, there's no D in this case, equal to what? Equal to the transfer function we just find, equal to this guy, OK? So you can change from transfer function to state space model, from state space model to transfer Either way is fine. OK, now we have learned almost everything in the state space modeling, especially linear state space modeling. So most general case is what? Is the nonlinear vector field or nonlinear state update equation, the F and the H. If it's linear, you'll need to find A, B, C, D matrix. OK, then we learn from how to from continuous time to discrete time from nonlinear to linear around some operating point. Now we also learned how to from time domain to Z domain, back and forth, okay? So all of this, then you have a, a, a I think a good understanding of, uh, hopefully, of the state space models. Any questions?